Howdy, everybody. Welcome to Kilson Culture. I'm Rocky. This is Eric. Yo. Happy belated 4th of July episode. I don't know whether, technically, I don't know whether this is a belated 4th of July or if it's a 50-week early 4th of July episode, but we figured technical difficulties on July 3rd will not stop us. We must persevere. We must push on. Yep. So here we yep. are. Um, today, a whole bunch of different stuff. One, you'll notice we're doing this live on a Wednesday at 6 o'clock. We figured try something different, basically. it's We usually go live Fridays at 3, or, or the first Friday of the month at 3. So we figured, let's try a Wednesday at 6, see if we can get more people, you know, on their way home or already gotten home or whatever. Let us know in the comments if this is a better time frame for you, worse time frame, what you think of it. Um, point number two. Today, we're going to do a featured question. Uh, basically, we've noticed trends in certain questions that we get over time, so we kind of squish them together and make a single featured question that we do a little bit of uh, thought about before the show. Today's featured question is, Eric. Basically, we have a lot of people who ask us about the background of American tartans, like what constitutes an American tartan? Is there an official American tartan? So we're going to dive into that a little bit. Indeed. Point number three. We have the Joseph Magnus Cigar Blend Bourbon. This was a gift from a viewer of the show, Nancy Fraley, um, a master blender in her own right. We're going to drink this in one minute. Um, I'll get into why this is actually pre-poured in a sec. Um, and the last thing is, we have another new segment we're going to do called Kilt Ambassador. Um, so stay tuned for that middle of the show. Yeah. Indeed. So now, enough ado, let's get to drinking. Let's get this drinking. <clears throat> All right. Joseph Magnus Cigar Blend Bourbon. I got some some notes here. Um, this was done by Nancy Fraley, who's a master blender and a, a fan of the show. She trained uh, uh, under a 10th generation French cognac maker who moved to California in the 1980s. In 2016, she found herself smoking a pipe on her back porch in California under the glorious redwoods and did not feel that the uh, the whiskey or bourbon pairings that she had blended or, or mixed well with her pipe. So she, you know, broke out the beakers, put on the mad scientist jacket, and <laughs> she decided to make her own bourbon for cigar smoke, or cigar, cigar blend bourbon. Um, this is her batch number 17. This batch has bourbons from 11 and a half to 20 years old in it. And a note from Nancy. This bourbon tends to be very tight before you open it, like a fine red wine. Pour some liquid off the bottle down the neck to the shoulder and let it breathe and get a little bit more exposure to oxygen before drinking. I would highly recommend you do this for any whiskey that you guys want to review on the show, period. Um, so we poured it off and due to the COVIDs, um, we, uh, pre we actually pre-poured our, our bourbon today. Yep. So we have all got our highly coveted off sought after USA kilts Glenn carrying glasses. And the uh, uh, the last point I'm gonna make, well, she actually wrote us a nice little note on here. Uh, I've already, you know, touched it, so I kind of, you know, screwed it up a little bit. But Taraki and the USA Kilts crew, thanks for keeping Celtic artisanship alive, Slancha and Nancy. So, awesome, thank you, Nancy. So, now, to the actual review of said bourbon. Mm -hmm. um, do you guys, Mac and Eric, do you guys want to do the aromatic and the palate notes before we start monkeying around with it? Or do you want me to read what they're supposed to be and then we'll do it? Here's the disclaimer note from Nancy as well. She's not a big fan of tasting notes um, because everyone smells and tastes things differently, which is true. Yeah, makes sense. Um, but I pressured her and said, look, we have no idea what the hell we're doing. We need we need something to aim for. So, so I asked her for for her uh, aromatic and palate notes. Um, do you want them now, or do we want to wait and see if you can guess? I think it might be fun to see if we come up with a similar thing to what she came up with. I think it'd be more fun. Okay, that's fine. Out. These are pretty obscure. She's a very intense lady. Because so uh, she's got that trained palate going she on. She knows so, what she's yeah. doing, we don't. So we can uh, we can leave these off for now, and we'll uh, 
Get to get to sniffing. Now is it is it pipe or cigar? Uh, did I say pipe? You said it's, cigar. It says cigar blend bourbon. It is cigar. Okay. Yes. Okay. Indeed. So I'm gonna. Are you supposed to pour water into it? I was about to ask. I don't know if you're supposed to water uh, bourbon or not. I'll do I a little will... bit of both. There's yeah. a lot of rules with this one. <laughs> what do you smell there, Mac? What do you smell? Kind of reminds me of paint thinner, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're off to a good start. <laughs> Nancy <laughs> reminds us of paint thinner. Yes, say that. Ah, <laughs> oh, ye old turpentine. <laughs> Marvelous. I'd say paint thinner mixed with some wood. Yeah, it reminds me of my like basement in my childhood <laughs> with my dad working on the bench, you know, making tables and stuff out of wood, and it, me sitting there hammering it nails in the blocks. Me, um, to be kinder, it is. Uh, there's a little bit of a, I'm getting a kind of a cherry vanilla. You say, I'm picking up a little bit of vanilla. Yeah. A little <clears throat> caramelly also. So kind of classic generic notes that somebody who doesn't know what they're talking about would say. But um, it, but it, it's reminding me of Tester's model paint a little bit. <laughs> the, now. Which is actually nostalgic for me. I've read the notes, so I'm kind of cheating a little bit. But I'll say. I like the one, it. I'll say that. The no, I do like the nose. The one that I'm smelling a little bit is apricot. Remember, smile and open your mouth a little bit when you smell, according to Bill Reed. Yeah, it looks weird and awkward, but... I don't know. All right, enough smelling. I don't get the apricot. Okay. It's a little burny. It's definitely burny, but I kind of was expecting that yeah. from a bourbon. I got like an oaky kind of... Taste to it. A little bit of cherry now. Back of the throat. And then, yeah, and the top of the nose. That's like burning in the middle for me. It reminds me of uh, like like a pipe tobacco. It has yeah. that same like yep. tendencies. Mm -hmm. I'll say this when we when we got right, it. I'm gonna water mine a little bit. Uh, yeah, I'll water it too. Um, when we when we got it and started looking at the the tasting notes, when she was saying it was a, you know it was a cigar blend bourbon, and she wanted to send it to us, I was like, oh okay, cool. Um, we don't really drink you know Eric smokes pipes. We don't really smoke cigars, but that's fine. We'll still try it. Um, I was expecting it to have um, like a, in the tasting notes, like either a leather or a tobacco or something like that in, in as a note to it, but it's yeah. not it's not on there. So. But it's supposed to complement. Yes, understood. Tobacco, so yeah. All right. I'm gonna read the aromatic notes since we're kind of fumbling a little bit on this one. Um, <coughs> <laughs> that good, huh? No, it's, it's not the company. It's no, it's not bad. It's not. I don't want you, you know you guys to think that I that I no, dislike it's, it. It's different from what I'm used to drinking. I just it's, need to spend some time with it. I think. It's there you go. It's very very warming. I'll say that. Mm -hmm. um, aromatic notes: grilled ripe peach, dried apricot, medjool date, cherry pie with a buttery crust, British Christmas cake, lime blossom, sassafras or root beer, and wild prunes. On the palate. Wild prunes. Wild. Specifically wild. Domesticated wild prunes. prunes. Oh. Was that a John um, Waters film? I have no idea. Yeah. Um, palate. Fruity notes. Old cedar chest. Chocolate mousse. Brown baking spices. Sandalwood incense. To me, this sounds like the worst fruit smoothie ever. <laughs> <laughs> it, like, I was thinking about this. I'm like... I wonder if you, you take tasting notes from this or anything else and you work backwards and throw in all the stuff to a blender and mix in some alcohol if you could come anywhere close to the actual taste. You know, like try to try to backwards engineer it. Backwards engineer it in a horrible, horrible Well, we have way. done coffee and breath mints together, so <laughs> might as well do that next. Um, Fair point. 
I am I am not developed enough of a palate to pick up all of that kind of nuance. Um, Me neither. I do get I I am getting some some of the fruitiness, some of the the a peachy. Now now I'm getting more of a peachy apricotty kind of a thing. Um, Suggestion. I'm still getting that sweet. It's very sweet on the front end. Um, it's still kind of burny to me. Now, I will say, now that I've watered it, the nose does remind me of some to uh, tobacco blends I have gotten for pipe smoking. It does remind me a little bit of, uh, like, a cherry uh, cherry pipe tobacco. Are you getting that? Yeah, I've noticed that uh, Yeah, right off the bat. It sort of reminds me of the, I can't think of the, the cherry that I normally get. I don't know if it's Paladin or there's another one that I usually mm. get okay. that it has that same initial bite and then kind of tapers off like it. Yeah, yeah, it's, it, it there was a cherry... Uh, English uh, tobacco blend that you see called Doc Watson. Mm -hmm. It kind of reminds me of that. You've had Doc Watson? Mm -hmm. It's yeah. been a while, but yeah. <clears throat> mm -hmm. The the yeah. water uh, definitely helped. It definitely so. took the bite off. So. Um, oh, it, it, it leveled it out a bit. Um, yeah, and, um, and, um, it's not nearly as burny uh, going right. down with a little bit of water. Yeah, I'm, I'm, it, and now I'm getting like an old book kind of a kind of a feel, like an old. Uh, because I'm sure you all have 120 year old books in your libraries, right? <laughs> um, yeah, kind of a leather leather books in the study kind of a. I'm liking it more and more. I'll, the I'll water like, an yeah. hour from now, I'm probably gonna like it a lot. Yeah, we we poured this out what 10 minutes ago to let it breathe a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. We the the shoulder we took the uh, uh, the scot or the the bourbon down to the, the 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 off the neck of the bottle to the shoulder. We took it down to about here, about. A week ago, um, yeah. just to try to let it, you know, hit the air a little bit more, um, and then when we poured it out or poured it into glasses. Um, that was about, well, 20 minutes ago now, 25 minutes ago now. Um, but the water absolutely helps this to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but it does. It's, I yeah, it's it's taking some getting used to, especially because yeah. I, I was drinking my Callan this week, and it's so totally different from that. But yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. This yeah. is, uh, I could definitely get used to this. And I can't. You can't beat the color either. The color. Yo, the, the color is the gorgeous. Color is a pleasure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In and of itself, it's got some it's nice really legs. Really beautiful. Um, legs are when you you know pour it over to the side and you just watch the little the little drips run down the side. Um, it, it's got beautiful legs, Mac. <laughs> legs for days on this guy or and it bourbon knows how to um, use them. Yes, exactly. The, um, the longer I'm letting it, after I'm dr drank it and like, get, kind of get that aftertaste, it almost reminds me of like. And this is gonna be bad too. It's uh -oh. gonna be. It tastes like fresh cut grass smells. That's for me. interesting. That is interesting. I'll 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 say hey. Okay, I get that. Root hay, or we have a we have a like a early summer wheat coming up in the fields near us, mm -hmm. and uh, and when it was ripening, just when it was ripening, you got this wonderful aroma off the field. Um, I could see that. I could see that with us. Tastes like the the foggy morning dew <laughs> of a wheat field in the breeze, like sixty seven degrees outside. Yeah, don't go mocking my wheat field, man. No, I'm going a little further down the rabbit hole here. Yeah, okay. Um, no, I'm, it's definitely a little Tastes bit sweeter. Tastes like a rabbit hole. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fur. Um, all right, very good. Mac, score one to ten on the Joseph Magus cigar blend bourbon. On these scotch. I'm gonna scale. I'm gonna go with with a with a with a five point four, but I would like to field test this with a pipe though. I agree. Fair point. If, Fair if we, point. If we could smoke in the building, I totally would have brought mm -hmm. a pipe in for this. Yeah, yeah. Fair point. Okay. <clears throat> so five point four for Mac. Eric. I'm gonna go like a seven point six. I'm 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 really kind of digging it now. I'm easing into it. Okay. And the water helped, so. Yeah, yeah, the water definitely helped. The water upped my score absolutely. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go uh, five eight. Okay. Strong score. I'm still, you know, still like it. Um, again, we are not, or I am not. I won't speak for you guys. I'm not myself a bourbon drinker, but it's better than like you know Jack Daniels. Um, so it's a good showing. Yeah. Thank you, Nancy. Absolutely. I'm, this is this is actually really special. Yeah, it's yeah. it's awesome. It's very interesting. I love when people send us scotch and bourbon <laughs> and all kinds of alcohol. Can't, can't complain about that. Absolutely yeah. not. So yeah, very good.
All in all, good score. Nice. Yeah. All right. Mr. Eric. Now I want to pipe. Shall we proceed with the... If uh, you are ready, sir, I think that this is probably going to be mostly your um, uh, discussion. And I will oh, try, yeah. I, I will try and uh, chime in as I'm able. Fair point. If you guys, and I'll, I'm going to bring this up now as well. Um, I forget whether I said it or not. Um, if you guys have questions about U.S. tartans, state tartans, um, military tartans for the U.S., that kind of stuff, load them in the comments now. I'm going to have Mac kind of prioritize those um, when we get our done our little you know, discussion yeah, kinda, panel kinda, discussion kind of dovetail with what I yeah. think you're going to say. So, Indeed. Okay. So, what do you got for me? <clears throat> Ask me a question to, so I can to, to answer quote a, question. To quote a guy quoting a guy, what's the deal with American <laughs> tartans? Um, seriously, I mean, is there... Are all American tartans transplants from Scotland? How old does a history of people registering tartans who are Americans registering a, a tartan for an American purpose or, an, or for the country? How far back does it go? Is it really a thing? <sighs> I'm... I have no idea. Short answer. Done. Um, no, the... Uh, Thanks, folks. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Um, no, the... Uh, uh, I started digging around a little bit about uh, different state tartans to try to figure out what the oldest tartan was, and then I kind of got sidetracked, so I don't know if I ever found it. Um, the oldest one that's coming to my mind is the, uh, the Bicentennial Tartan. Mm. Um, it's now called the American St. Andrews Society's Tartan. Um, but it was originally known as the Bicentennial Tartan. That one was 1974. It is, as you would guess, especially for a tartan designed in the 70s, very, very red, white, and blue. Um, it is... So 74, uh, so it would be there in time for... <coughs> the Bicentennial. The Bicentennial in 76. Absolutely. Okay. Um, but there are uh, there are a lot... There are, uh, there are state tartans. Mm -hmm. There's tartans for groups... There's tartans for the U.S. military branches. There's tartans for groups within the military. Um, so I'll just go through a few. Um, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, uh, Coast Guard, they all have tartan, their own tartans. None of them are official, um, using my air quotes there. None of them are official, but they all do have their own tartans. And through wanton usage over time, they've effectively become you know, military tartans. What about the Coast Guard? I said Coast Guard. Yes, but is that sort of official because it's the official tartan? It's of their the official band? tartan of their of the Coast Guard right. band. <clears throat> um, I don't know if the if the Coast Guard itself has given the old Hanukkah Danica to the the Coast Guard tartan as the official tartan for the Coast Guard or just for the band. I think it's just for the band at this time. But obviously, if somebody's in the service, <clears throat> correct me if I'm wrong. But I think yeah. it's just the band. So. Each of those have their own stuff. Um, and then there's also tartans for groups within branches of the military, like mm -hmm. the CBs. Yep. Um, I, actually, I actually did a design for the U.S. Civil Affairs Tartan, or U.S. Army Civil Affairs mm -hmm. Tartan, um, with a guy named Steven Starbuck. Um, so, and that one had to be, uh, uh, the, the register asked us to have it you know, officially, you know, blessed by a colonel or a high-ranking officer within that specific segment of the Army. Mm -hmm. um, so there's military tartans, there's tartans to honor military stuff. There's actually um, the Confederate Memorial, Union Memorial, Federal Memorial. There's the, oh, I'm actually wearing the Federal Memorial tartan today. Um, there's the Daughters of the American Revolution have their own tartan. Um, roughly 60-ish percent of uh, U.S. states have officially sanctioned tartans. I, I started digging into that. I didn't have that much time to do research, but the um, started digging around. And Wikipedia has an article on it. There's like uh, a few websites on like state symbols and mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. The problem right. is a lot of the websites that are out there that are listing the state symbols or listing the, the, the state tartans are actually wrong. And I know they're wrong because huh. they don't list Pennsylvania. Uh, okay. <clears throat> they list okay. some, not all, <clears throat> necessarily, and I'll say they're at least wrong by one. Um, Pennsylvania has a state tartan. Um, that one was designed in 1992, and it was officially approved by the state legislature in 2012. Right. That's that. That would be my question. Is, to a sense, is how many of them? I think I think probably a lot of people have designed tartans for a state, 
um, and they're out there, but how many of them are official, and as in ratified, <coughs> by the state government versus just like, hey, this is great, it'd be great if you guys wore it? The answer is yes. <laughs> um, okay. there, there's, there's a lot. Um, some of them are officially ratified by the states, others aren't. As I said, I couldn't find a, a single or even multiple sources to kind of corroborate which ones were or weren't. So unless you went through each state one at a time, you could probably figure it out by doing a lot of digging. Again, gotcha. I don't have quite that much free time. Um, but, you know, I know Pennsylvania has one. I know it was ratified 20 years after it was designed. <clears throat> um, Oklahoma has one. We'll talk about that one a little bit later. Right. Um, that one's official. Um, Texas actually has three or four. They have a lot got, of different state gardens. The, the Blue Bonnet. Blue Bonnet is the yep. official one. That, that is one the official is the one. Okay. official one. Okay. The problem that you do run into as well is some are official, but they're copyrighted. Uh, so right. Blue Bonnet right. is the official state tartan, but it's copyrighted. Um, it's it, the copyright, uh, not the copyright holder, but the people that have the, the authority to do stuff in it. Um, it's a company called Scotland Forever down in Texas. Roxy, great lady, love her to death. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but... That's the only place you can get the Texas Blue Bonnet Tartan is one source. Um, the Massachusetts, I think, is copyrighted, if memory serves. I know Maine was because there was a thing, a little you know, tangent story, as I do. Um, uh, it's the bourbon. <laughs> I wish. Um, <laughs> Maine actually has a registered and copyrighted tartan, and uh, L.L. Bean, who does a lot of tartan stuff... Mm -hmm. did a shirt design in the main tartan, not knowing it was copyrighted. Oops. And uh, Oops. A, 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 an undisclosed amount later, they stopped <laughs> doing the main tartan. Um, but it just goes to show it's just because it's a, it's a weird one where I always thought or felt that official government slash state things shouldn't be copyrighted it should be open for any one of the state um in the same way that like political yeah. figures can't copyright their own image it, it then belongs to the people if you're a political figure <coughs> um the same kind of thing would make sense to me as a state um symbols of the state can't be copyrighted but apparently they can interesting yeah hmm. it's a it's a weird it's a weird one it's like kind of a weird niche issue I yeah. guess. i mean yeah, yeah, yeah. I... <clears throat> That's yeah, but it's they're all registered with the registry, right? Yes, even you know, okay. well, I shouldn't say they're all. I, I'm assuming they're all okay. Um, but it's it, all of it kind of makes sense. I'll, I'll go you know thirty thousand foot view. Um, having American tartans. Well, now and let's go into the national. Um, there's sure. the uh, uh, there's the uh, the bicentennial one, which is now American St. Andrew Society tartan. There's American National Tartan. There's American Heritage. There actually is one that we did. Um, there's a lot of different American tartans. There's a lot of different state tartans. It, it, and if you start thinking about it, um, like what does America have to do with Scotland? What does tartan have to do with Scotland? It does make sense with the, the, the mixing bowl, the melting pot that is America, and people wanting to incorporate their culture, their heritage, their thing into their daily lives, into the into the salad bowl, it makes sense that people would want to not just take their pride of their family and their clan tartan, but say, you know what, you know, a lot of Scots like did X, Y, and Z in my state. Um, it had you know massive battle here. There was, was Scottish soldiers, whatever yeah. it was. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of Scottish settlers. There's you know a a, a pocket of people with Scottish or Irish heritage, mm -hmm. and they want to express that somehow. Tartan is an easy, tangible, visible way to express it and show off to the world as a symbol. This is a cool thing of my heritage and of my country. Yeah. There's, so yeah, but you have a, a sizable uh, population in your region, and like you said, some history behind it. Um, I think it's also comes down to the. Uh, the enthusiasm and devotion that people have for an organization they're in. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if the people who have come up with uh, a lot of the state tartans have worked with their state government or have done something with the functions of their state. 
I mean, state pride is a is a weird thing. I mean, for some of us, it comes kind of naturally, like you know. But but I think for other places, like you, there's something that some kind of personal involvement is going to spur you to be interested enough to want to develop something. Yes and no. The the from the research, the limited research that I've done on the state ones. Mm -hmm. um, generally, it's an organization in the state, and they just want to kind of promote the thing. organization yeah, okay. and or the thing and or appreciation for tartan and okay. then they kind of like but they they tack it on to the organization um so it's it so it could be like your saint andrew society in oklahoma or not massachusetts oklahoma, in... hey guys just me jumping in here for a sec i was wrong so close but i was wrong it's not the massachusetts state tartan it was the rhode island state tartan and the rhode island saint andrew society Okay, so that's an example. Yeah, okay. St. Andrew's Side of Massachusetts Island. actually designed the Massachusetts State Tartan and then got it pushed through, but they own it. Okay. So okay. I'm, I believe I'm correct on that. Don't quote me 100%, but I'm like 95% sure. So it's an organization showing regional pride as opposed to yes. an individual. Yes. Because I'm also used to a <clears throat> paradigm where a guy who's really passionate wants to design a tartan for his family, organization, club, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, but you're saying it's yeah. more... Or, or a historian or someone like that that's, yeah. that is yeah. happens to be Scottish that's passionate well, like the, about the, their the, state, the, the region. The federal and, con and uh, confederate tartans are definitely a, his a history buffs thing. guy who was a Civil War buff basically designed those, didn't he? Uh, no, it was Dr. Dr. Smith. Um, he's done a lot of tartans. Oh, okay. um, he, like, literally dozens of, okay. yeah, Max nodding his head. So he's a, he's tar done, he's a tartan hobbyist. Yes, <laughs> from the, okay. his heyday um, was the 1990s. He designed a lot of tartans in the 90s. I've never had the pleasure of meeting him, but <laughs> I own a couple of his tartans. Um, so there's that. I don't think the, the Confederate and the Federal and Union Memorial tartans are all from a, a passion for that, but he may have been contracted because there weren't that many tartan designers. There weren't computers designing tartans like our tartan designer and you know, other ones you find online that there are now. Um, where I would agree with you is like, Daughters of the American Revolution having their yeah. own tartan. Yeah, that is a historical, you know, it, you know, inspired, you know, history geek club right. who wants their own tartan just for something fun. Um, that one, okay. you're right on. Okay. So yeah. Run, so basically, it runs the gamut. Yeah. It just like kind of like America itself. There's, exactly. There's about a million different reasons for why people do things in this country. Yeah. It's, it's cool. You can, yeah. It's individual group. You know. It, all kind yeah it's it's just it's fun and it's a it's a it's a fun way to link scotland and america oh the other the other category i didn't even touch on there are scottish you know, there, there are tartans from mixed heritage there's scottish american okay. irish american i did the german american right. there's right. filipino american there's huh. italian american like there's all okay. kinds okay. of tartans that are designed to blend everything and just kind of, again, the whole salad bowl thing, the dressing gets on all the lettuce. It's fun to just play with different cultures respectfully and kind of show off your pride and your heritage in your own way to those around you. Mm -hmm. That's all I have to say about that. That's a lot. Exactly. But yeah, it's, 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 <clears throat> it's a spunky load of noodles, as I like to say. Indeed. But it's also, I think it's emblematic of, of our country because... I think there, there's a freeform, creative, individualistic attitude about it that I don't know if you would have back in the UK. You know, if, if you were going to do this <clears throat> in the UK, I think some people would just be like, "Why are you bothering? It's, what, do you, what do you mean? That's yeah. a Scottish thing. Why, why would you have a tartan for your florists' club? You know, but, it, but here it's kind of like, what the hell? Let's do it. I, you know? I I would go beyond it, and I would say the the old uh, I don't know if it's old adage or I said it or somebody I heard it somewhere along the way of. Uh, 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 kilts are worn by Scots in America and Americans in Scotland. Yeah. Um, where right. when you come over here, you want to celebrate it. And I would I would kind of lump in the fact that you have all these different cultures. You have Hispanics. You have like all kinds of different stuff. And it's like I've touched on this before. It's really cool. Um, Celtic classic the Beth uh, the uh, the festival in Bethlehem. It's really really cool because there's a lot of Hispanic population in Bethlehem. And to see them just wandering, you know, Hispanic people wandering around 
the Celtic Classic Festival enjoying a completely different culture that they weren't brought up in, but it's just something fun to experience. In the same way of going to a Puerto Rican Day Parade or whatever, it's, it's a fun way to experience a different culture and you don't have to be afraid like, oh, I'm not part of this, I feel weird. It's no one, at least the Celtic Classic or those kind of events that I've seen, it doesn't feel weird, it just feels like a celebration of a particular thing in that particular moment, mm -hmm. not at the exclusion of somebody else, just as a part of, hey, let's all have a good time. This is cool this weekend. Next weekend, let's do this other thing. Next weekend, let's do that thing. Mm -hmm. So there's kind of, it's there's room for everybody right. kind of mentality yeah. with it. It's basically celebratory. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> as it should be. Yeah. What do you think, Mac? We get in Yeah. Cool. We want to chime in. We bombarded we, we, with people saying how horrible we are. About <laughs> we, we've, we do have quite a few questions coming in nice. ab about the state tartans, and okay. and um, <sighs> one of the things is where can they go to see these or to just even just view them or purchase them? <clears throat> That's the, a hit or miss thing, isn't it? Yeah, very much so. Seeing them, I would assume, like I said, most of them are probably on the the registry. Yep. So you can go to the Scottish government's tartan registry to see them. You know, plug in your state name, and you should be able to find it there. That'd be yeah. the most direct way. TartanRegister.gov.uk, Google it. Um, there are, again, there's 60, 70% of the states have tartans. Some don't. Um, I would say this. I don't think any are really stock supported by any of the mills. So it's where do you get it? It's going to be a custom weave. Um, yeah. There's not a lot Most of, of um, there's not a lot of places stock supporting them because there isn't enough of a demand or, en or enough perce or perceived amount of demand for state tartan collection. Um, we've done a run of the Pennsylvania tartan. Yep. Actually, two runs or two runs of it. One of wool. the best. Yes. Pennsylvania. The best. Um, <clears throat> best in the union. Um, <laughs> no, we did a, uh, a couple runs of it in wool and we do it in our polyviscose fabric. Um, so we are one of the few places that actually stocks a state tartan. Um, but there's, um, we've done them for organizations. We've done, uh, what, Mac, Iowa? Um, um, New Mexico, Alaska. No, 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 not the state seal collection. Oh, state the, seal. The, the ones we've done for, for organizations or for, oh. for bands. Uh, Oklahoma. Utah. Utah. No, that, that's Utah State. University oh, that's just state, yes. Um, <laughs> we we have way too many wool tartans here yeah, in the building to remember. Um, <clears throat> is, oh, yeah, and that's another whole thing we didn't touch on. Universities. Yeah. Colleges. Yep. Um, yep. A lot of them have bands or pipe bands, or they're using it as a corporate marketing tool yep. for, we want to do blankets, and it's going to be fun. Let's do a tartan. So they design their own tartan. But, sorry, Mac, I never Um you. Is that Kentucky or Kansas? That Kentucky, we did. For the okay. Kentucky Colonels. Okay. Um, yes. Yeah, we've done a few. We have them in wool, but we can't sell them because an organization owns it. Um, we can maybe put you in touch with an organization if we happen to have it and say, hey, can can John Smith buy a couple yards for a kilt for himself? Do you mind? Um, but yeah. outside of that, um, yeah, it's for the most part, it's custom weave. So, <sighs> unfortunately, you're relegated to two things. One, custom weave pricing, which is freaking expensive, um, or two, get a group together that'll right. do, you know, a, a mass order of 20, 30 kilts, and then use that, you know, and then you can get a, a, a reasonable price on yeah, the Yeah, that's really the best way. I think that's that's the way we, all your examples are basically pointing to that as being the way yeah. people get this to happen, is you need to have a posse of guys who really <clears throat> want it, and then you pull your resources. So. And I'm going to guess this is the same way. We have uh, a few people asking about state uh, kilt pins. Well, I'm assuming that would be along the same lines as a custom. Yeah, I don't know who's... That would be even less. Yeah. I think some of the state seals could be really awesome kilt pins. I think some of them could be really awkward kilt pins. I, I guess it depends on how you do it. If you do it by the if you do it by the state shape, or if you do it by the motto, the seal, you know. It, the yeah. shape I like, but you you end up with like Colorado, where it's like a square. But yeah, the, yeah. <laughs> look at my square; it's a kill pin. <laughs> right. Um, but the uh, the state um, the state crest or the uh, state seal, a lot of them are extremely busy. Complicated. Yeah, really busy. So yeah. I don't know how well. They would, they would, tr when you, when you shrink it down 
to, you know, you know, inch diameter kind of circle. Yeah, I have little faith that a casting of that is going to look I think you have to good. think outside the box. It needs to be something that's iconic of the state. You know, like for Pennsylvania, we could just have like a cheesesteak. Or a Liberty or Bell. Or something. Or a Liberty Bell. Yeah, okay, Liberty, Liberty Bell. Bell. Uh, police, uh, Philly it's police. dinner time. I'm hungry. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Philly Police and Fire. That's their kilt pin they had custom made before they were dealing with us. They have a sword with a Liberty Bell on it. Yeah. And that's pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, but again, those things don't yeah. really exist as a thing, but they could be done if you have a group of people who are interested in doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. The The problem with uh, the state kilt pins and things like that is going to be even a smaller... It, it's well, it's it's easier to get into to some degree because it's it's less expensive. It's just a kilt pin, um, but there's this this cost to entry of there's a three hundred fifty dollar mold fee to get the thing designed up and then the mold you know the master made up okay. and all that kind of stuff. So it's a big barrier to entry. Um, then once you have that done, then it's you know twenty five bucks or whatever it is a kilt pin. So you have to amortize the cost of three hundred fifty bucks over. Yeah. the initial batch yeah. or have a benefactor saying <clears throat> I really really want it to happen so here's 350 bucks go yeah sometimes you need an angel <clears throat> as my yes, grandfather angel would investor say. Mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. indeed any other the the only other uh, really big question that came up was the is there a presidential tartan or Good is question. that being debated by too many sides <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to get into <laughs> politics um, there's not a presidential tartan there's a US seal Tartan, huh. um, House of Edgar did arrange the Tartans, what ten years ago, um, fifteen years ago now, and it's uh, it's either the best thing you've ever seen or an abomination to the Lord our God. <laughs> um, it's um, they used um, intarsia. What's what's uh, what's it called when you weave in the a design into a, a pattern? Oh, is it intarsia or? Uh... Mac, know, do you know what I'm talking about? A, yeah, I know brocade, what you mean, but I can't. Brocade, I, weave. brocade yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Brocade, thank you. Okay. Um, they did it basically with an Irish shamrock and harp. They did it with the Welsh dragon. They did it with a Scottish thistle, one with a Scottish lion, and a Canadian maple leaf. That's right. Looking at you, Lucas. <laughs> um, and the, the great seal, uh, like the eagle, you know, kind oh, of okay, seal. Oh, okay, so like the American mm -hmm. eagle. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. Um, and then it's basically they took for, let's say, America, a red piece of cloth mm -hmm. did white with the white and blue stripes or like a yeah. stripe um, making a an eight inch square and then in checkerboard pattern like every other one they did a brocade American uh, Eagle or in yeah. the Irish one they did a thistle and a shamrock and the Canadian one they did a maple leaf it's the, horrible it's it's horrible it's, it's something it's a, it's a gimmick it, it, it is yes it's a gimmick it's, it's a, a gimmick. showpiece it's a costume Here's um, the here's the amusing anecdote. Hmm. Was uh, <clears throat> House of Edgar uh, one, one of the mills? They actually make kilts as well. Um, once in a while, they'll send around the list to all their all their customers and say, "Hey, we have a bunch of kilts. We're trying to sell cheap. You know, if you want a kilt, let us know." So you know, it's effectively for for below cost or below their normal cost. So I give it to the employees and say, "Hey, anybody want a, a kilt cheap? Here you go." Um, and Lucas saw on there. Maple leaf. <laughs> so he was like, "Ooh, I've been eyeing the maple leaf tartan, and I can get an eight-yard kilt for two hundred bucks. I'm in." So I ordered him the maple leaf tartan that was on that list in his size, and to watch <laughs> the excitement drain from his face was a thing of glory. Oh my god! Yeah. As we opened the box. And recognized, like, hey, Lucas, your kilt's in here, your kilt's oh, boy, in here. Oh, oh, he was all excited, oh, dear, like a little it. puppy. He opened it up, saw the bright red thing with the Canadian Ew. maple leaf shape and, you know, brocade on there. And he's just like, uh, oh, no. <laughs> you bought it, dude. You didn't ask. I think he has since found a buyer for it. On yeah, eBay. I think he sold yes. it on eBay. I think he sold it. Yeah. But, but uh, oh, that was hysterical. It is. It, for, those, for those wondering, it is very, very red. Very, very white. Yes. Um, the way that they pleat all of those, they don't sell the... I don't think they sell the cloth. They just sell finished kilts. And the way they pleat all of them is to the stripe. And this is a like a, a triple white stripe, if I'm remembering correctly. Mm -hmm. So it's like a really, really wide white like section on each pleat in the back. So the whole back of the kilt's white. It's a dog's dinner. Uh, uh. So I would say if there is... 
to get him back on track Poor and Lucas. stop beating up on Lucas. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm as empathizing much, as much and laughing is, simultaneously. But, yeah. um, we should do the all Lucas episode sometime. The um, I would say the closest to like something that would be presidential would be like to go with the original bicentennial tartan. The problem is it's not that great looking a tartan. Yeah, there's. You know, but it is the oldest, and it, it's kind of <clears throat> storied in the fact that it was done for the bicentennial. So if you're going to have one that was like official for the United States, that seems like the most likely candidate. No, American heritage, buddy. What are you? <laughs> okay, I'm trying to be Shut gracious up. here. No, the um, uh, bicentennial. It's the design itself is bad. Don't don't edu- I agree. don't don't push for that one. Okay. I don't like it. I'm not pushing. Personal, just personal to be... bias. Okay. There's also like an America tartan, um, but I think that was done by Pendleton's Woolen Mill in. in the West Coast and it, yeah, for profit thing. Yeah, they do. They yeah. do a lot of stuff. Well, in fairness, our American uh, heritage is for profit. Well, but yeah, it's, I think I'm just arguing that if you wanted to have a national tartan, it should be <clears> one that was produced for the sake of having a national tartan, not for a profit motive or not because you just wanted to see what it would look like or something. It should be, it should have a uh, intent behind it. I I but would I would I, maybe I it don't, doesn't matter. Maybe it really doesn't matter in the long run. It's a want and usage thing. I I don't disagree, but I would say this: um, everything that was done. In that vein, if you call it American National or Bicentennial or American Heritage or whatever, it's for profit. I mean, it's it's going to okay. someone's going to end up profiting from it. Period. Okay. Um, there was or there is the um, American National Tartan named that. Um, it's not official. It was done by Houston's in Paisley in Scotland. Um, they designed a tartan called American National and mm. sent a kilt to GW. Um, Bush in 2002, I want to say. Okay. Um, something in there. Um, okay. But they just sent him a kilt and got the obligatory thanks for the kilt back. <laughs> um, they called it American National. It's none of them, including American Heritage, none of them are official. They're all just existing. So it's, okay. you know, it, it's a fun thing. It's a way to show off national pride, um, but none of them are official. In the same way that none of the Irish tartans are official. And I would say this, what we have over the Irish tartans is at least some of the states are officially adopted. Where, to my knowledge, and I'm pretty sure in it, at least for the last five years or so, none of the Irish county tartans, nor the Irish or Ireland's national, have been officially adopted. They are all just kind of, uh, okay, they exist, thing. They're all for profit. Yeah. Okay. So... I, as part of me is willing to bet that when somebody invented the bicentennial tartan, given the the attitude of the nation at the time and how crazy people were for the bicentennial, that somebody did it honestly as a sincere America should have a tartan kind of a thing, as opposed to no, I don't, I don't disagree. It's just because of the culture of the time <clears throat> and and how how much how much of a big deal it was. Yeah, patriotic then. thing. Yeah, but, no, it's I agree. I just think that it's going to be one of those where it's um, somebody is eventually going to profit, therefore. It's it's going to be morphed into it, okay. um, even if the original intent is good. I don't disagree with you though. Okay. So, any other state or American tartan queries? No, I'm or y'all like get on with it. I, I'm just curious though if we can somehow rig the box up when you open up the America tartan, if we can get like an eagle scream as soon as you open the box and then eagle scream, fireworks to ah! shoot out, fireworks, yeah. red, white, and blue confetti, <laughs> and glitter. We'll get Chris Gulick on that. Sounds, sounds very Stephen Colbert all of a sudden. <laughs> that would be spectacular. Mm. Hmm. I'm liking this bourbon more and more. The more I let it sit. I'm getting more of those, some of those subtle notes now. Okay. Are you changing your score? No, I gave it a high score anyway because I could tell. Okay. You know, I just I had a good feeling about it. <sighs> what? Damn it. We have to edit this back in. Okay, back to the yep. bourbon. Yep, yep. The one thing I will say is, it is... Hold on. I have to hold the glass up again. <laughs> never do it very very professional again yeah, this, is, this, this is never how we do this um, it is complex the yep. bourbon was complex I, I do th- I do think it's I agree. a a well-rounded complex drink it's almost like somebody who knew what they were doing made it like a master blender master but, blender but it doesn't it it, it it doesn't smell masculine almost like a feminine master blender like like a female maybe maybe a lady named Nancy it's the, the scent of a woman Bourbon. Exactly. I don't. I'm stopping right there. Yes. Okay. Sorry. Shall we do a question now? Back to coffee. All right. Questions. Okay. Me or Mac? Yes. Um, load okay. your 
generic, regular, average, super duper questions in the comments. Um, Mr. Mac, our man at the keyboard, will be curating the questions, and Eric has mm -hmm, a, mm -hmm. a backlog of questions we did not get to in Tons. previous shows. So One of these days, we're, we're going to have to do like a shotgun lightning round show to catch up with some of this stuff. Yes, but. because we are so, so, you know, <laughs> we're so eloquent and short on, in our answers. Sharp. Sure. We're not long-winded yep. at all. Yep. Um, <laughs> what color is the sky? Let me think. Hold on a minute. Well, to that, and this actually dovetails kind of with what we were just talking about. <clears throat> okay. uh, Dwayne McLaren uh, is asking, can anyone register a tartan? What are reasons for people doing it at all? Are there qualifications? You know, is there certain people who are allowed to register a tartan, register a tartan, or some who are not? I mean, what do you have to have a qualification or an underlying reason, <clears throat> or can anybody do it? I'm not saying it's done in a dark alley, <laughs> but there's the there is a little bit of truth to the. Uh, hey kid, want to buy a tartan? Um, <laughs> the um, it's basically, do you have money? Do you have a design? You can register a tartan. You too yeah. can register a tartan. Um, the Scottish Tartan Register charges like 70 quid um, for the actual registration process. Um, it's roughly 100 bucks, whatever it is. Um, for If you want to do it all yourself, all you need is a tartan design, a name, and some kind of rationale if you care to give it a rationale. Yeah, you don't even have to. You can just say, yeah. I like how it looks. <clears throat> I don't, I don't know how I feel about it. It's 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 a weird one where I'm I'm, I'm kind of torn. Where in some ways, I'm I'm pleased that anybody can do it for any reason. It's open to the public, um, and the, in reality, what they're what they're trying to do is uh, where the what the STA and the Scottish Tartan Society and all that started out as was just a way to catalog the tartans that existed. They didn't want to put limitations on who and what is allowed to do or not allowed to do. It's just, they were just there as, you know, checking the boxes and making sure that, you know, there was a written record of all the stuff, mm -hmm. you know, for the annals of history. Um, when the uh, the Tartan Register of Scotland took it over and, and became a thing, um, they, uh, they kind of continued that and anybody can do it. But at the same time, there are some that are registered that, I don't know, it's, I, I feel like some of them to some degree, cheapen it, um, but it's hmm. but it's cool that it's open for anyone to do. I, as I said, I'm conflicted. I'm mm, don't come off as a snob, there, brother. Uh, it, it, well, that's why I'm saying I'm conflicted. Do you really think you should have registered that tartan? I'm just giving you a hard time. Um, my dog died. I want to register a tartan from a dead dog. Right. I mean, that's but that's the thing. It is. A, it's an art form. Um, I think. <clears throat> I think it's basically anybody can paint a picture. Anybody can, you know, design, you know, a dream car. So the, the, the difference is that here we have a way of cataloging your design for time and memoriam. So, Are we saying that in this in this scenario is the Scottish Tartan Registry the Metropolitan Metropolitan Museum of Art, where they are showcasing all of the things? And if so, is there a bar to get into the the Museum of Art, or is it just nope? They're just a uh, a secretary in a dark room writing it all down. I think it's the, I think it's the latter, but I think that's fine. You okay. know, it's it is it is history and it belongs to everyone. So right. I'm kind of leaning. It's it's overall yeah. it's a good thing that anyone can do it. And I'll, um, I'll, I'll I'll go further. I'll say that it's a service also for people who want to design tartans because you can go on there and see uh, what the range of designs are like. You can get a sense for what feels like a good design, what might not be a very attractive design, and it can be educational as you go through the process of wanting to invent one of your own. It gives you it gives you a bellwether, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, as opposed to just saying, I like blue, I like pink, you know. You can actually say, wow, wow, somebody did something kind of similar to what I was thinking, and I don't like how it turned out. Yeah, you know, I think I think it's a, a service in in that regard, definitely. So Okay. Interesting, complete tangent. Yeah. Google origins of the word bellwether. You'll okay. be quasi horrified. It was like a castrated calf that led the pack or something like that. It's it's weird. I don't know. I I, I googled okay. it the other day because I keep using. Okay. I've used it a bunch recently. Okay. I don't know why I this brought this up, but I've used it a lot recently, and the origins of the word didn't mean exactly what I thought it meant. Okay. And I was just like, 
It's kind of weird. I don't know if I want to use that I'm, word anymore. I'm really into etymology, so... Uh, I know. I will so am I. I will definitely look that up. Yes. Okay. Indeed. Um, and I'll even look it up on something other than Urban <clears throat> Dictionary. Just to be thorough. Indeed. No, I, I just Googled it, and it brought up the... Uh, the, well, whatever the Google rich snippet is, that the original history of it kind of okay. thing. So I'm trusting the Google. Anyway. Yes. Where were any, we? Anyone can register a tartan. There's yes. no restrictions on it. Um, but if you're going to do it, take your time and make sure you're happy with the design. Uh, I would say, you know, can live it with it for a while before you decide if you're going to register it or not. And if it's for a group, definitely take your time. And have some good consensus. The, yes, a couple things. One, let me step back half a step. Not the bellwether. Um, the the only thing that is regulated for two things that are regulated, for lack of a better term, in registering a tartan. One, the design itself has to be an original design, so it does go through a process right. of being shown to different tartan scholars to make sure it's original. And that's the that's the other reason it's important to have it. Yes. Two, the um, well, in fairness, it was it was before that as well with the STA. Yeah. Um, number two, the name itself has to be original or if you are saying that you are representing it for a group to make sure you have the approval of the group to be able to register it. Mm -hmm. um, in the instance of uh, uh, Clan Irwin Society, they I designed a tartan for them recently and I went to register it and the register kicked it back and said, you know, you need the uh, uh, the approval of the, the, the chief, clan chief of Clan Irwin to register the Clan Irwin Society tartan. So I flipped it over to them and said, hey, you know, can you can you give me the approval? I was a little conflicted on that one because it's for the the society or the association, not the clan itself. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. it is what it is. Mm -hmm. um, I completely forgot my other thing. Where did you say? Right before that, um, we were talking nature, about. Nature, it's original is a good thing. Yeah, I don't know. We'll move on because I forgot my thoughts. Why are we what doing happened? the show after Did, hours again? I missed my nap time, I swear. Okay, okay. Indeed. All right, any other questions? Mr. Mac on state stuff. On or, well, no, I guess we're beyond state on. stuff already. We're, on, we're, we're on. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're done. It doesn't have to be a full state Forging show. Forging ahead. Exactly. All right, random question, Mac. Hit All right. me with your best shot. So I think this one's a little bit time sensitive, and we are going to try to get to everyone's questions, so... We're going to work through them, as, so, so we better bear with talk us. a little faster. Um, Colin on YouTube is asking, Kilt for prom, what should he do? He's already got some stuff. Um, okay. He's got a few things. He ordered a McEwen kilt. He's got some brogues, uh, love a green tweed vest, and a dress sporn. He's putting together his outfit. He's 17. What else should he get? <clears throat> what should he do? What he shouldn't, shouldn't do? What kind of sporn did he say? Dress sporn? Dress sporn. Okay, with and tweed, he has a kilt? With a, with a tweed vest? Um, McEwen kilt, um, love a green tweed vest. Okay, good choice, McEwen here. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> You're not biased at all. Not at all. <laughs> um, <laughs> what else does he need? I think he's in good shape. I would I would say... Depends on how formally he wants to be exactly. for prom. Exactly. For prom, I would seriously consider purchasing or renting an Argyle set uh, for that night. The vest is fantastic for... Um, you know, day, day wear. wear. You know, just regular going out, wanting to look sharp in your kilt. But for an occasion when you're with your date who's dressed up to the nines and got the corsage and all that going on, you probably want something a little more formal than tweed. Um, in a jacket. On the other hand, we live in the day and age of people making freaking awesome prom dresses out of duct tape. So, you know, there's, there's no hard and fast rules about what you do in terms of expressing yourself at prom. But I would say because you want to be elegant and gentlemanly and look sharp, I would probably go with black, a little black and chrome action there with the argyle. Yeah, I yeah. agree with that. Yeah, it's... and uh, don't wear cream hose. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a good point. Um, the uh, we're we're kind of snobby about the cream hose thing. Um, the telltale sign of a rental outfit, generally speaking, of course, is cream hose. So a an easy, inexpensive way to kind of up the game of your outfit is to get a pair of kilt hose that tone with the actual tartan. So if you're wearing McEwen Modern, bottle green, um, mm -hmm. charcoal would be great. If you're wearing McEwen Ancient, love it green, love it blue. You know, a light blue color would be fine. Um, charcoal would be fine with that as well. Just something kind of that, that tones well with the kilt itself. Yeah. So I would say, would you say stay away from a skin do? 
That's a very good point. Um, you may need to consider leaving the ski and do at home because of typical campus regulations. Um, it is very rare these days to have a school campus that will allow you to have anything like a knife on it. You might be able to get away with a fake or come up with something clever that's kind of a joke ski and do. You know, it's like, you know, you got a wooden spoon, but the top looks like a, a fancy ski and do handle. You know, you could play it that way, but I would probably say, let me put it this way. If I were going to, if I had to make the choice, and I think it's, again, it's a really good point, Mac. Um, I would ditch the skin do, but take the money you might have spent on a skin do and make sure you have a really good dress shirt that you like. Um, something with actual French cuffs you can, you know, rock the cuff links. Um, that's like the extra finishing touch, and you'll definitely get a lot of use out of it afterwards. You know, little things like that. Um, a good dress shirt is something a lot of kids your age don't really have. Um, so I would say, you know, get to it. Charles Truitt? Is Charles Truitt brand? or, you know, anywhere. Just three banks, anywhere. Preferred. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's what I would do, and yeah, I would skip the skin do. Get some rock and cuff links instead. The other thing I would absolutely say, um, 10, 15 years ago now, there was a few hubbubs about guys trying to wear kilts to prom. So I think some it's schools, easier now, but yeah. Some schools are a little bit more lenient and will say, that's fine. Other schools are a little bit more stick up the you know what and might say, well, you know, no, we don't want that kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> I would say this wear underwear. If you get accosted yeah. by a teacher, principal, whatever it is, as you're walking into prom, have underwear on. You don't want to have your entire and your date's entire night ruined by the fact that you felt the need to go commando for prom. Um, generally, that's actually like 50% of the school's complaint. Half of it may be we don't want a guy in a dress or we don't want somebody in a weird outfit taking attention away or acting whatever. Um, the other half is fear of said person not wearing underwear. Mm -hmm. So take that out of the equation. Again, you know, it's it's just it's good practice when you're at an event like that where there may be some kind of friction with authority that you have underwear on. That way if they you know, if they wag their finger at you and be like, Nope, I know what you're doing, I know you're not wearing anything underneath there, you can kinda of show the side and be like, dude, I have underwear on, don't worry, I'm decent, it's not gonna be a thing, I'm being respectful, this is my heritage, this is how I choose to represent myself. Um, and just move forward with it that way. Yeah, and I would say um, make sure you got your folks on side. Um, if there's anybody you can test the waters with a little bit ahead of time, make sure that you're not gonna have friction with authorities in the school um, or kind of get them used to the idea. Um, make sure you have some advocacy for yourself uh, in case there is a potential <coughs> of somebody saying, well, you can't do that for prom. Um, there, I think it's getting a lot better. I think the last couple of years I've heard less and less issues. Yeah, I've heard I've less too. Seen, I've definitely seen the pictures. Of, I haven't heard any issues this year. COVID. Uh, um, the, uh, uh, no, but I would say this. If your prom is next year, great. <laughs> I would say this. That, well, a couple things. One, if to some degree it's easier to ask forgiveness than permission. So True. If assuming, it were me. his parents are okay with that. Yes. If your parents are okay, then I would do this. Um, if you're really, really nervous and, you don't, and you're a non-confrontational type person, mm. then I would say ask permission of... The principal, it helps if his last name is McDonald, um, <laughs> but ask permission from the school, explain what you're doing and why you're doing it, and then get a written thing from them saying you're okay to do it. That way, if you meet resistance at the door, you flash the badge and say, nope, I'm allowed. Um, shove it, Miss Smith. Um, <clears throat> if you are more confrontational or you'd rather ask for forgiveness and permission, what I'd say is this. Just to be safe, throw a suit in the car. Mm. It's yeah, it's. I guess that way you're you're you can you can stick to your guns and you can say nope, I'm wearing this. And you go in and you're you know if you meet no resistance, great. You go in and you're fine. You have a good time. Memories to be made. If you meet resistance at the door and they just freak out and say, no, you can't do it, you can't come in, we're not allowing it, it's against the dress code or whatever, insert a whole reason here, then you have the ability to go, fine, I'm gonna go change. And you go out to your car, throw on a suit and you go back in and then you protest later on. 
It's mm -hmm. you have a backup plan. Always have a plan B. A whole reason as opposed to a half reason, of course. Um, Colin, yes. No, Colin, I think, that, I think that, that that's a good point. Is that, is that you're you don't want to? It, it's important from an honor standpoint, from a chivalric standpoint. I'm old fashioned uh, to make sure you're not doing anything that's going to ruin the night for your date. So with her consideration in mind, yeah, backup plan is probably a good idea. I was going to say you could prime the pump if your school does an international night or an international <clears> day. <throat> see if you can wear the kilt to do a presentation at that, and then the school gets used to you being the kid in the kilt. You know, you're kind of getting used to the idea and kind of weaken the barriers that way. Yeah. International nights are great for that. Yeah. Sorry, Mac, you're about to say yeah, something? No, Colin is on here. He's uh, Hi, saying Colin. he's saying that his um, uh, the school is very is very open to this. And, okay, great. Uh, one of his teachers is in McLeod. And they are starting a kilt club in the school. So, oh, dude! So nice. this, he's he's got it in <laughs> on this fine. one. So, now, yeah, if I anyone just... needs a kilt, Colin. <laughs> back back to point A. Then I would say that the the formality and the romance of the occasion of a prom warrants having a nice jacket and vest, uh, not just doing the tweet. You now, know what, I mean? um, what would you guys think? Because <clears throat> my lovely wife decided to add to add to another production. Thing for me I to make. No families, no families allowed on the show. I know she's she's yeah. violating yeah. rule You're number. Show preference. Yeah, rule number allowed. one here. Um, mm -hmm. What about something for the his girlfriend or his date? Um, like uh, some scrap of cloth for a corsage, or you could probably use a little bit. Of, you could probably use a little bit of tartan to go with whatever corsage she's going to be wearing. Um, it's been so long. I don't even remember who's in charge of buying the corsage anymore. Is it the, the guys in charge the guys? of buying the corsage? Yeah. So he could potentially provide a little tartan to go with the corsage. A sash would be nice. Um, I would just be leery of making her pay for anything. That'd be my I, only concern. I, I would, unless she's super into it, I wouldn't. And I would also say this: um, the corsage is like you're presenting it to her as a gift. At, le at least back when I was a kid. Back in uh, the morning. morning. Um, uh, you're presenting it to her as a gift. So. If, I, I don't know women's fashion, um, but if you give her a sash and she's like, uh, this doesn't go with my dress, you're kind of, you're stepping on her fashion, you're, you're crossing the streams. It's not like marriage where you're inviting her into the family and like here's a symbol of me inviting you in and accepting you as part of us. Um, this is, it's a date, you're in high school. Um, so it could be cool, but I would say Maybe ask her yeah, just find if out it she's would into work. It. Yeah, ask her yeah. if it will work. Don't just assume and present it and say, here you go, wear this, and then be crushed if she doesn't want to. Or it might be she might think it's cool to try and get her prom dress in a color that complements your tartan. Could be as simple as that. But yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, sometimes prom dates are weird. Sometimes it's like it's somebody you've known for years. Other times it's like, dude, I don't have a date for the prom. What the hell am I going to do? And you know what? Neither do I. Do you just want to go together? All right. Cool, let's do it. So it, it, yeah, it depends on your relationship with her. You didn't have a promposal, Eric? I was you set you up. Didn't, you didn't drive or you know, ride to the horse or ride to the school on a horse and, you know, in your white that's a outfit? Hindu, and, that's a Hindu wedding, and those well, are freaking awesome. No, like the promposal thing, it's a whole thing now. Really? Oh, you got it. Like, it's it's like wedding proposal on steroids for prom. Yeah. <laughs> you got to make a spectacle of yourself to I weep for the future. A, um... No, I was set up for my prom date. I did not want to go. Nice. And people set me up with somebody to go. Wasn't a good thing. No. Rarely is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Next question, Mr. Mack. Uh, I think we've, um, <coughs> we may have something new coming up right now. Something okay. about... Dun, dun, dun! <coughs> Long already? Crap, we have. <laughs> Are you doing the thing? I did the thing. You did the thing. Oh, we're okay. ready to go. Did you do the the, the thing? The How thing. We, the thing went. Were people all impressed at nice. all of our? Graphics? I don't know. No one's responding to anything right no, now. Okay. So. We spent like millions on that graphic, so everyone. In fairness, we spent want... way too much time discussing <laughs> what trumpet sound would be correct. I want to see it again. To introduce. I want to see it again. The kilt ambassador. Yeah. Fair I enough. Love it. This month, we started a little something. A little something. Something. Um, a lot of our customers, a lot of people out there are doing some pretty cool stuff. Um, showcasing tartan, doing cool things in their kilts, whether it's altruistic, whether it's just fun, whether it's, you know, community driven, whatever it is. So 
we want to start highlighting some of the stuff that you guys are doing. <clears throat> this month, inaugural Kilt Ambassador, Jack Robertson. He's actually the president of the United Scottish Clans of Oklahoma. Um, it is a pretty cool organization. What they do is they have events throughout the year. They actually host the games down there. Um, they do a few community-driven things, a few charitable things. Um, they're just promoting Scottish culture and supporting the, the Scottish clans, the outreach in Oklahoma. Um, they actually did a, a, a custom run of the Oklahoma State Tartan for their organization. Um, Jack is a wonderful, wonderful guy. I've talked to him a few times. Um, if any of you are in Oklahoma and want to connect with some kin, um, want to get involved, and want to do something fun and kind of community related, I would suggest that you go check them out. Uh, United Scottish Clans of Oklahoma. Um, yeah, pretty cool organization. I think it's an awesome concept. I mean, because... Um, <clears throat> I do too. And what do you do if you're like the only member of your clan in like the tri-state area or whatever? Yeah, especially you know, in, a, wanna... in, a, in a state that has maybe less Scottish heritage in it or something like that. It's or a, just it's a, a lower to... population density. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's a way to have a, a bigger umbrella to kind of you know, gather you yeah. all and do some fun stuff together as opposed to just clan related. Yeah. 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 So, so awesome. Yeah. So Eric. Yes, Rocky. These fine people watching this show. These fine people out here. Fine, yeah. fine ladies and gentlemen. If they want to be a kilt ambassador. A recognized kilt ambassador. A recognized, <clears throat> a featured, a sure. celebrated kilt ambassador. Okay. How would they go about doing that, Eric? Well, I'll say that, you know, you're all kilt ambassadors, but the celebrated part is what we want to do here. We want to give you all a shout out. And so it's pretty easy. Basically, if you've done something that you're proud of, if you're doing something that you're proud of, part of a group or as an individual effort, it could be just something adventurous or it could be something that's really meaningful and important to the community. Uh, I'm going to say just post about it on your Facebook wall, include a picture and uh, tag us. We just need that tag so we know where to find you. Uh, so basically, I'm not talking hashtag. I'm talking a regular tag. Just tag USA Kilt in the post. USA Kilt. Yep. yep. And that way we, with our little pea brains, will be able to go through and say, who? Who's got there? And uh, find your post and read all about it. And then we're going to pick randomly from the submissions. And I would say that goes cross-platform. We're not just doing Facebook. Correct. Whether that's Twitter, whether it's Facebook, whether it's the I, the Instagrams, whether it's the Twitches, the, the, the YouTubes, whatever to everything probably all, not probably not crazy the TikToks, kids yeah well tiktok too who cares whatever um post about cool stuff you're doing in your kilt yep. um be a kilt ambassador be out there do some cool stuff show off what you got tag us in it so we can find you and also because we tend to be idiots on stuff um <laughs> email it to us as well or, or you know, send us idea. a message whatever like yep. hey i did the thing you told me to do here it is um and every month we're going to try to celebrate one of you guys or gals out there doing cool stuff. I'll go one step further. It just occurred to me, you know, if you know somebody else who you think is a great kilt ambassador, nominate them. We'll take recommendations. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. So do they get a sticker? They get a hug. They get a big, big virtual hug. hug. A, yeah, a distanced hug. A six-foot <laughs> distance hug. <laughs> or if you're in Oklahoma, a very distance hug. But... Jack's a nice guy. He'd probably hug him in Oklahoma. Probably. Yeah. We'll send you the Jack. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, no, but look up Scottish clans or uh, uh, United Scottish clans of Oklahoma, mm -hmm. cool peoples, and uh, we look forward to seeing all the awesome stuff you guys are doing. Right on. Next question, Mr. Mac. All right, so we have John Young on Facebook asking: Are there are there many other bands besides the Pub Crawlers that have made their own? Band tartans. Pub crawlers fan. <clears throat> huh. Pub crawlers are good peeps. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, pub crawlers are an awesome band, uh, Irish Celtic punk band out of Maine. Um, yeah, go check them out. Yes, there are a lot of different uh, bands that have done it. The Kilmaine Saints have designed. Well, we actually did the pub crawlers tartan. Fair, fair disclosure. Mm -hmm. um, the Kilmaine Saints out of Harrisburg. They have their own tartan. They designed their own. Um, Kudu has their own tartan. Albanock has their own tartan. We yep. did both of those. Yep. The Dropkick Murphys have their own tartan. They haven't done a damn thing with it, but <laughs> they have their own tartan. Again, <laughs> designed by us. Oh, well. Um, say la vie. Um, but 
Yeah, a lot of bands do. It's it's Tartan as you know, touching back on the other stuff we were touching on before. Um, Tartan is a, a a tangible, visible way to celebrate that heritage and celebrate that connection and that link. So it's it's also a, a an identity thing, not just clan, but a corporate or band or group identity. So yeah, there's there's a lot of tartans for bands and for groups, whether musical groups or you know whatever. Yeah. And if you're if you're talking pipe bands, like we haven't even opened that oh, Pandora's yeah, box. Tons of yeah, pipe bands. there's dozens of type pipe bands. That's a whole different that category than what yeah. I think he was thinking about. <clears throat> yeah. But yeah. Any others you can think of that have a? Those are the tartan? those are the big ones I'm familiar with. Um, but my musical scene's a little different from yours. So Fair. not a lot of metal bands Fair that point. have their own tartans. But, but they should. Indeed. Our tartan What's is the uh, Our tartan is black. Yeah, what? with contrasting lines of black. <laughs> exactly. The darkest shade of death black. <laughs> um, what's the what's the uh Armin Armin or Amonamarth? Amonamarth? Yeah, yeah. Nah. I still want them yeah. to get a tartan. It's not their thing, dude. I don't care. They're Vikings. They should still have it. I Vikings did not wear tartan. Don't care. Don't care. I'm German. I have a tartan. Fine. Okay. Tartan. Let's. We'll, you want to book a flight to Sweden? I'll go. <clears throat> I'll, I'll talk to him. We'll, we'll force it onto like big scary hey, good Swedish luck. dudes. Yeah. Like, You're wearing this. No. Okay. Bye. But <laughs> well, we're not allowed to go to Sweden anyway. <laughs> That's true. Not right now. <laughs> so there you go. <clears throat> should Indeed. more bands have tartans? Absolutely. It'd yes. be awesome. Indeed. Send them to us. Rock out. Should I do one? Yes. Okay. Two even. Yeah. We got to power through these, man. It's getting late. All right. Joe Groves, uh, this is from a couple weeks ago, asked, uh, when did the kilt become recognized as a Scottish symbol? Uh, and when did Lowlanders start wearing kilts? I think it was always recognized as a Scottish symbol, at least a Highland symbol. Um, Lowlanders were... You're the history guy, not me, so I'm going to give it to you. I, I guess. I see you staring at me, just like, screw this up. Go ahead, Rock. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> nope. I'm, I'm waiting. Nope. I'm waiting. I'm, it, um, taking the foot out of the bear trap on that one. <laughs> um, <clears throat> there's never an easy answer for this kind of thing, but uh, in some ways, this is an easier answer than for a lot of similar questions. Tartan has always been associated with uh, Celtic culture, um, even going back to Roman times. There's actually a, a Roman statue of an emperor coming home from the wars and he's got a prisoner behind him and the prisoner uh, was carved wearing tartan pants. Okay, yeah, the so, mosaic of yes, like... Yes, the mosaic of the tartan. Yep. So, and that's that, I think that statue's in Spain or something. But um, So tartan uh, plaid, to use a colloquial term, a very generic term, um, goes back a long way. What we consider tartan has been associated with uh, the Highlanders for a long, long time. The earliest records of it that we have in some ways go back as far as the earliest records we have of kilts. So meaning um, one or two images from the 16th century, definitely 17th century. The uh, the symbol thing, though, is very much a 19th century thing. Tartan didn't really become a symbol of the nation of Scotland as opposed to just the Highlanders and clan society until Scotland started to kind of resurface culturally from the damage and the the lag time resultant from the prescriptions after the 45. So essentially the watershed event for that was when King George IV visited Scotland in 1822. And With all his royal plumage. Yes. Um, <clears throat> we actually have a video coming up on this, so no spoilers. But um, essentially Sir Walter Scott the various Highland societies and Celtic societies that had been working behind the scenes um, from the end of the 18th century into the early 19th century had been trying to get uh, Scottish culture boosted on the world stage for a long time. And then when George came to Edinburgh and put on Highland garb, which he spent a considerable amount of money on, by the way, um, he kind of cemented uh, what became called Highlandism, which is basically Highland dress and Highland customs and native Scottish culture and Highland culture especially uh, becoming fashionable and becoming cool and that meant that it just took off like a shot so 1822 was kind of the watershed event and from at that point you had a lot of lowlanders who traditionally had kind of looked down their noses at Highlanders as kind of country bumpkins all of a sudden they wanted to be Highlanders too and that's when Tartan started to become a truly national emblem of, of the nation as a whole 
I'm kind of picturing the, the Homer Simpson backing into the, the hedges and coming back out in the full tartan garb. Kinda. Yeah. Kinda. <clears throat> it's This is what the cool kids are doing. Yeah, we've always mm-hmm. loved tartan. Sure. Yep. Um, yep. And and no and not coincidentally, that's when you started to see clan lords uh, getting into the idea of having a clan-related tartan also. Um, yep. There had been instances of clans having a certain tartan for the livery for their servants before that. But when this happened, it was kind of like, oh yeah, we need something to wear for this the is big a thing. event. This in is a August. family symbol. Yeah. Now it's yeah. Because because there was a huge parade of the clans. The all all these clan chiefs came and and presented themselves before the king, um, and so they all needed something to wear. And so that's where a lot of that started. This is, we're going to all show up like a team, and like you know we all need exactly. Well, they have their own thing now. We need ours too. So mm-hmm. it's it kind of snowballs. It's the it's the uh, uh, the peacock thing. It's we can't be outstaged. We got to keep up with the Joneses. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's basically that's basically in a nutshell, a very small nutshell. Um, it, it was tartan has always been there, but as a national symbol, it definitely took off after 1822. Yeah. Oddly enough, because of an English king. Well, a British king, British monarch, but an English dude. Through the mists of time, Tartan has always been there. And yep. we definitely, like I said, we're doing a video, and we will definitely talk about George a bit, but mostly about Sir Walter Scott. Yeah, it's kind of... And kinda... how, he, how he did a lot to make this happen. Yeah, it's it's interesting how it just, it kind of started as a, uh, there's so many different, you know, theories, half-truths, like misty, murky beginnings to it. Then all of a sudden, like, there's an event where it's kind of like, oh, hallelujah, and mm-hmm. it just, boom, mm-hmm. there it is. But before that, it was, it was a thing, but it was kind of, like, poo-pooed, but now it's like, now we want to know about it, and it's it's kind of lost a little bit. Yep. So. I think things, things happen because people have a need for them. Yeah. And I think that's basically what happened. So. And it, I, would, I would also say that, you know, to some degree, thank God it did, because if it didn't, it would have oh, probably yeah. just gone away. That was so it it cemented it as this is now a real thing. We yeah, do this exactly. Not to have too many spoilers for my video, but um, that was basically Scott, Sir Walter Scott, when he was writing. Part of his ethos was that he was trying to preserve a vision of a culture that he saw going extinct, because the Anglicization of Scotland was getting so thick when he was growing up in the late 18th century. It seemed like Scottish culture was going to just disappear completely. And he didn't want that to happen. So that's why he started writing the books he wrote and the poems he wrote and everything. So, nice. Yeah. Well, I give him a lot of props. I really do. He gets yeah. a bad rep sometimes, but personally, I, he's a hero of mine. So. Nice. Good stuff. There you go. Mr. Mac. All right. Something Rocky can answer. <coughs> <laughs> not not boss like... is tired. <laughs> All right. So let's go with Stray Cat 1... Six seven four on YouTube. Is there a is mill? Is he strutting as he types the answer? I don't know. Fair enough. Or, I hope so. Or is he a, a Chatham Confederation guy? Did I get that right? Yeah. 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 Chat, Chatham Chatham. Chatham, Chatham, yeah, yeah. Chatham yeah. yeah. Is there a mill you use that will create colors to match uh, custom shades, or do they just get as close as they can? Um, so I guess he's looking to design. <coughs> Design yeah. a tartan and trying to get a particular color. Sure. How much money you got? <laughs> um, yeah. It's it, it it comes down to economics. Um, basically, <clears throat> here's how you look at it. Um, the uh, the tartan designer on our website. We use uh, the stock sh- the the colors that we have in our tartan designer are stock shades. From House of Edgar, that's the mill that we use for the majority of our, our single length, small run uh, custom weaves. So we had, you know, I basically said to them, <clears throat> hey guys, give me your stock shades. Tell me what you have available to use as stock color patterns. I'll put them on the website. And then I'll also include a, the old color wheel with the Pantone number. Um, and, you know, you guys as, as designers can put whatever color you want in there. The, when I went to, uh, to Nick over at the House of Edgar and said, hey, I have a guy who, uh, you know, needs a particular shade of green. And he would say, okay, fine. That's going to add $100 to a, a short run custom weave. And I kind of, you know, spit out my coffee a little bit, like $100 for a particular shade of green. And his, his response, which well, makes sense, is, <clears throat> look, when we have yarn woven, we have to dye a minimum of two kilos. 
which is a good chunk of yarn. So if you're only going to have a small amount woven in this color, we have to buy X. So it's like saying, you know, I want to buy, uh, I can't think of a parallel. I want to buy a thing, but I have to buy 50 of them because they only sell them in minimum of 50. So we can do enough just for your kilt or just for your tartan or whatever. However, if you're only weaving a small length, the mill has to buy a good chunk of wool just for your one kilt. And if it's a weird off, like, you know, a fluorescent orange, they're not going to be able to incorporate that in their standard range. Therefore, they have to buy it outright mm. from the dyer. Therefore, they're going to pass that cost on to me, and I'm going to pass that cost on to you. So, basically what it boils down to is, for every custom color you want in a short run of tartan, it's going to add like a hundred bucks to the cost. Now, if you said, I want to weave, you know, a, you know, a, a thousand yards of this you know, thing for my huge organization. Fine, done, not a problem. Because they're going to be able to weave or uh, uh, have enough yarn dyed to cover right. that, you know, and then some. So it really comes down to the economies of scale. How much cloth are you doing and how much of each color, uh, how much of the color is needed. If like in this one, if I said I want a very particular shade of yellow for these two tiny stripes in this tartan, I may not be using that much yarn. Um, if I said I want a particular shade of blue and it's one of the main two colors, yeah, it's probably fine. So it's it really boils down to it can be done. Really, any of the mills can do it. Um, it just matters you know, how much cloth you're having woven. Mm -hmm. How often? How often? Um... Do people design a tartan and come to you and say they really need that weird of a color as opposed to seeing the, the, the swatches of, of <clears throat> yarns and saying, okay, that's close enough. It depends. I mean, like pink or something like mustard. It depends on the event. If it is for something that they have to match a particular shade, if it's school tartan mm. and they want to match their school colors, mm -hmm. if it's a sports team and they want to match the team colors, if it is for a wedding and they want to match a particular bridesmaid color or whatever, those are the kind of scenarios where people tend to be more persnickety um, because there's a reason why they need an exact shade of green or brown or whatever. Um, if it is, if it's for your own personal tartan and there's also the money aspect of if it's for my own tartan and I really am trying to be economical about it. I may say, close enough. Good enough, let's just go with that. If it's for a, but if it's, if, if money is no object, but you absolutely must have this particular shade of red because it's the only one that you want, or, or you know, conversely, the mill only carries two shades of yellow and you want like a golden mustard brown yellow and that's not one of the ones they carry, you're gonna have to. So it's it really okay. varies from situation to situation. Gotcha. Okay. So yeah, that's about it. So the answer is it can be done. It can be done. It's expensive. It's expensive, um, depending on the amount that you're weaving. Yep. Very good, Mr. Eric. What? Oh, question. <laughs> I'm done my coffee. This is horrible. I need more coffee. Um. This name sounds familiar. Um, Nancy Fraley? <coughs> Nancy Fraley. That's our Scotch friend. Master Blender. Our, our bourbon oh. friend. Sorry. Sorry. Um, is it inappropriate or bad form to join more than one clan society? And if you join one, does that mean you can no longer honor the other clans of your heritage by wearing their tartans? Are you allowed, are you allowed to cross the stream socially? Um, it kind of boils down to your personal feeling on it. Um, by joining a clan society, a, a clan, you know, by joining a clan, you're effectively saying you're, you're pledging your loyalty to that clan chief. So when you don a, a clan crest cap badge, it actually has the clan chief's insignia, the, the crest of that clan chief, encircled by a belt, and the belt symbolizes loyalty. Um... So, in, in some way, yeah, you're kind of saying, I'm loyal to this clan, 
and that clan, and that clan. So it, it, it I'm of two minds. It's in some ways it kind of cheapens it. In the other way, it's you're it, being loyal to a particular clan. You're not going to war for the dude. You're not. Yeah, it's let's hope not. They have their own armies <laughs> over there in the UK. They'll be fine without you, Nancy. <laughs> but um, it's in reality, my, my pragmatic, practical brain goes back to the clan society itself. In joining multiple clan societies, you're paying dues to join the society. So yeah. you're supporting the culture. You're supporting the Stuart and the McDonald and the Baird and the whatever clan society. So you're making a monetary donation to that clan. Yes, you can also say, you know, I'm a member of Clan Stewart and of Clan Donald, but you're making a monetary contribution which helps preserve the culture uh, for generations going forward. So in that way, I would say, sure, you're fine doing it because you're just helping out more clans and more people. Um, the only thing I would specify is typically what's not done, using the British term, is you don't mix them. So if you're wearing a McDonald kilt, you would not wear a Stuart kilt pin. Or if you're wearing a McDonald <coughs> cap badge, you wear a McDonald kilt pin, not a Stuart kilt pin. You pick one, and that's what you are, at least for the day. Um, the Scottish way to do it is you pick one, and that's what you are, period. But if you want to support more than one clan society, in my mind, I don't think you're hurting anything by doing it. Yeah, I think... Um I'm really pragmatic and American about this. Um, now, my, my British loyalist side would say, no, your clan is your clan. But um, let's be realistic. If you've got multiple lines of heritage, which most of us do, um, and it's a messy mess because we're all part of diaspora, um, then there's nothing wrong with supporting the culture in any way you can. These societies need all the help and all the membership they can get. Um, we need all the involvement and representation we can get. So. I would say there's nothing wrong with joining more than one society, being polyclanious, if you will. But uh, I would say, you like that? Um, but I would say, um, you know, at least at, at events or something, be selective. You know, like make sure that there's nothing weird going on. Like if you have Clan A and Clan B both showing up at this huge festival you're going to, and you're like, hey, um, I'm gonna go hang out with the other guys this afternoon. That would be awkward. Um, but worlds uh, colliding, to quote uh, Seinfeld. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, oh my gosh, don't let them see me, don't let them see me. Why was <laughs> Maybe, but, or even just like, you know, what, you don't want to volunteer at our tent? What's wrong? What's wrong with us? Why don't you want to volunteer at our tent today? Um, maybe <clears throat> pick and choose which clan you're representing at which event, if it goes that far. But I think for most of us, it really is kind of a, most of the time, it's a virtual thing, not a real life thing. It's more what you're doing online and monetarily. So I don't see any problem with it, because um, you're boosting the culture. And there's also really cool organizations like United Scottish Clans of Oklahoma. Hey, I've heard about them. Where you can do multiple things yeah. and support multiple clans simultaneously. Golly. Indeed. So yeah, I just wouldn't try to bounce back and forth between yeah. two clan tents at a, at, a, at a festival. That'd be kind of weird. Yeah, pick one on the day at minimum. Do that one. Don't bounce back and forth. Um, or in the parade, you know. Running back up and up and down the line. Yeah, go go behind the building. You know, have one go first, and then run behind the building and go on the other one. <clears throat> Be very, very, very tired. Like stripping off the kilt as you're running down the street to throw on the other one. Like you you grab the next kilt like a bottle of water at a right, running race. Right. <laughs> wow, those Campbells and those McDonald's really look similar. I've seen that face before. Why is Nancy sweaty? Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Fair it's enough. A, it's a good question. <laughs> yeah, very good. Mr. Mack. Well, I think one thing we forgot to do so far, when we said it, and you said it very quickly earlier, is what tartans are you guys wearing? Usually he does this reminder a lot earlier in the show. But we are, we are blabbering. Boy, have we been blabbering. It's almost yeah. like we missed you guys. It's been a long <clears> time. I, for, for our Murga episode, I am rocking our Ungrateful Colonial T-shirt. With my federal memorial kilt. And I got the memo, but kind of ignored it. So <laughs> I'm wearing I'm wearing the Kilt and Culture Memorial Tartan. It's not really a memorial tartan, is it? All the, of the, our members this died. This is the Kilt and Culture Tartan. 
Still Mac? Absolutely gorgeous. What are you rocking back there? Well, your... I have the red version of the uh, Ungrateful Colonial t-shirt, and I have the Strathclyde blue uh, kilt on today. Ooh, so nice. you're, ro- you're doing nice. the red, white, and blue thing? Very and, nice. And, yes, and, I am. And he did, the hat, he did the hat thing again. <clears throat> He's got all tone. Well, they are running the all-star race right now, so I, have, I have okay. no idea what's going on. So I'm, We've uh, ruined your day. I'm, I'm itching to find out what's going on. So Sorry. So this show is going to go till 9 p.m. tonight <laughs> just to really annoy Mac. So, now it's I thank you guys for for staying late and doing something a little a little no different. Problem. We're trying no this out. Mm-hmm. Cool. All right, any other questions? So that we've here's the here's a out of the way? Here's a quick one, but it's an interesting one. Uh, Rodney on YouTube is asking odd question, are there any glow in the dark kilts? <laughs> Are I there hope, in I existence? Hope not. <laughs> um, there, I have an answer of a sort, but if, if, like black light yeah. might react with it, the, the, the like pro- the white stripe or something. Yeah, the the, the 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 term you want, Rodney, is UV reactive, and yes, white <laughs> will show up nicely under UV. Um, glow in the dark is if you have the the fluorescent filament, green yeah, yeah. filament, but but. Uh, could you weave a tartan that would be nicely UV reactive? I'd say you'd have to test it. Like like some tartans, I could see definitely reacting. The more white in it, obviously, the more it's gonna react. I but, suddenly uh, want to break out glow sticks. And inch, inch. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, the uh, <laughs> stop me. Um, the <laughs> somebody stop me. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's, it could be done. It would be a matter of how the fabric, like, took to being woven. Um, would you use just a particular color? Would you use multiple colors? Or are we talking about black light versus yeah. There's some pretty actual ama- There are some pretty amazing glow-in-the-dark fabrics out there these days. You yeah, can, I, I imagine it one. could be done as an art project. I don't see anybody um, wanting to do it. As an art teacher, I would fail you. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, it's it could be it could be done. It would be like it would be, it wouldn't be worth the cost, to me. I would be like, huh, that's different. Okay, next. <laughs> I, I would take I would take a beater kilt, that you know if if you if we're talking tartan, not like utility kilt or you know hybrid, but I would take a tartan kilt that's a beater, and then I would overpaint it with some of the glow in the dark paint, so that you don't notice it. Yeah, and then when you go into the when you go in to the dark space, then all of a sudden <clears throat> some gridular pattern in the in the glow in the dark shows up. But we're it's we're still he's going to Burning Man. Obviously, that's understood. that's why he's asking. But we're still trying to separate actual glow in the dark, meaning no fl- no no black light. You just right. turn off the lights and bloop. Um, that's the sound of glowing. <laughs> bloop. Oh, makes okay. that sound for some reason. Um, versus black light reactive. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, now, UV reactive tartans, anything woven in Pakistan. <laughs> um, the bright sky. <laughs> Woo. Yeah. Um, acrylics. Yeah. Will probably be more UV reactive, as yeah. will the lint that sticks to the acrylics. So you get yeah. a little star effect of all the little specks of lint. Now, going back to my college days. Um, okay. If you take, I believe this is true. I think I'm remembering this correctly. If you take tide. Laundry detergent. You can actually like paint and then put black light on it, and it shows up. Really? Yeah. If okay. I'm remembering that correct, correct, I remember like somebody like painting on their ceiling walls and stuff and put black light on it. And this is this is college in the late '90s, by the way. This is not like '70s weird stuff. This is just <laughs> I'm not quite that old stuff. <laughs> it's '90s weird stuff, exactly. Um, I don't yeah. Know. I've That's never heard that. Thought. Never tried yeah. that. Exactly. Okay. So all the tartan, all, all the tartan rave outfits. Weird. Now that we're going to see, we're going to get all kinds of interesting pictures. Yeah, I guess the only thing I was thinking of was like the reflective stuff, like the reflective material. Yeah, like yeah. firefighter reflective. Yeah, but that's not really like low. Yeah. Reflective thread is very common now, like in you know. Night, yeah, safety gear. Yeah, safety yeah. gear, yeah. night vision stuff. Not night, yeah, I guess it could be night done, visibility but... stuff. They... Hey, Coraline, we got an art project for you. <laughs> um, what's, what's the line from uh, uh, Jurassic Park? They never stopped to you're, ask. You were so busy 
What or if it was possible, you never stopped to ask if you should do yeah. it or something. Something like that. Yeah, yeah, that. Insert Jurassic Park clip here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. <laughs> um, yes, indeed. So don't don't try this at home, kids. Next, Eric. I think, I, you know, I would just ignore... You it. would. I know you I would. would. I would. I was going to say, I would ignore the uh, the kilt and just go with UV reactive and glow-in-the-dark stuff on the sporn. And the sworn chain. Make the accessories the... Uh, flashes? Shoelaces? Very flashy flashes. Yes. Yep. Okay. <laughs> uh, ooh, yeah. New <laughs> outfit builder. Okay, here's what we're going to do. <laughs> Eric hated doing that. Oh, my God. <laughs> that took way too much time. Yeah. That we, was... we did not get nearly enough use out of that clip. I have used it again recently, actually. Yes. In yeah, fact, it's... here it is. Ta-da! <laughs> Just... So we can make it's it a reference so episode. people know yeah. what we're talking about. Exactly. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go with uh, with one from our friend Ron. This is from Ron Voice, um, and this is something Captain that we Ron? this is something that uh, we've answered before, but there's a slightly different spin on it. Is there a tasteful way to represent two clans at the same time? And he's thinking about women's clothing as well as men's. Perhaps a tartan rosette under the kilt pin. Or one clan's kilt pin on a different clan's tartan. I've seen women wearing a tartan sash of their husband's clan and a rosette of their own clan behind the brooch. Now, I think we've answered this before. I answered it. It, yeah. bear, it bears repeating. Um, can it be done? Yes. Can it be... Should it be done? Uh, that's another question. Um, the... It's the American thing of wanting to represent all the things simultaneously. I want to show that I'm this and this and this, and I want to bring this in too, and I'm also a cowboy, so wear that hat, and I'm Native American, and whatever. Um, it, it can be done. It can look reasonably tasteful if, you, if the tartans are of the same palette. So like an ancient tartan and an ancient sash or an ancient rosette and an ancient sash hmm. um, it could probably look okay hmm. would I do it again no I probably wouldn't because it's not honoring either of them it's you're you're wearing a Pittsburgh Penguins hat with a Flyers jersey you're doing two teams simultaneously which the Scottish way to say it is you're not honoring either you're dis you're dishonoring both simultaneously which is the exact opposite of what you're trying to do and accomplish um so, for me, no, I wouldn't do it. Could you do it? Has it been done? Sure. Yeah. Is anyone going to call you on it? No, probably not. Yeah, I think, um, actually, Ron, the uh, the example that you gave of having the clan kilt pin versus the other clan's tartan <clears throat> is probably the most common way that we've seen people do that. Um, I've even occasionally seen people wear two kilt pins, so they have one of each for each clan, which is... I, I know. But, um, so, yeah... Elegance goes with subtlety. Subtlety goes with small. You're gonna so, give me a facial tick. <laughs> <laughs> we're watch. We're gonna watch Rocky's head explode now. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, if you feel if you really feel driven to do it, then yeah, keep it simple and keep it subtle. Women's fashion, it's gonna depend on her style. Um, I've definitely seen instances where in modern fashion, two different tartans are mixed as a fashion expression, having nothing to do with heritage. Um, it could be kind of weird looking. Or it could be kind of a nice pop of color, depending on the tartans that you're talking about. I've um, also, I've also, in in a, in a weird way, I've seen. I'm immediately remembering a pair of um, tartan pants I saw recently, where they had dress Stewart and hunting oh my Stewart. Gosh, those things. Hunting Stewart, like like mix match, like the front of this leg and the front of this leg and the back and the back were different. Um, so it was like a checkerboard kind of thing, um, of. All of Stuart Tartan. Lucas showed also, that to us. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm, and it's it's over the top, but on purpose over the top. I'm also thinking of yeah, like that's not a heritage expression. That's <clears throat> just a let's have fun with Tartan. It's cool. Yeah, I'm also thing. thinking of like a a jacket I've seen a Tartan jacket I've seen with like a bunch of different Tartans on it, or like going like fashion ways why wise ways I don't know. um like madras plaid is like a t they're not really tartans but like a thousand or dozen different tartans uh -huh. in different directions and things on a singular outfit um as as an art fashion piece it's not 
heritage, it's fashion. Yeah. They're separate. So if, if you're asking me from a heritage angle, should I do it? The answer is probably not from a heritage angle. From a fashion angle, from a, yeah, do you care if I do it? No, you do you. It's, it's, yeah. it's your thing. You're the one doing it. You may get a, a raised eyebrow from it, from somebody over in Scotland if you're doing it over there, but you're in America. I know you, Ron, so I know you're in America. Um, or the Cayman Islands when you're dying. You might be in the Caymans. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, but it's so it's it's one of those where it's I'm of two minds for the answer. I'm going to give you the traditional answer of yeah, you probably shouldn't, or the practical answer, fashion answer of sure, why not? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna say I would not recommend doing it as a as a blanket thing i wouldn't do it the one exception given the example i could see would be a very rarefied circumstance like a wedding and if as the bride she wants to represent both families or it's an homage to different sides of her family because her grandmother who was a mcdonald passed away or something like that then okay sure that's that's like a special ritualized kind of a situation and and you can kind of take things in a very special their own context for something yes. like that. But just but going to the opera, going to a ball, it would just be a, a burn little supper odd. Or something. Or burn yeah. supper, yeah. Burn supper yeah. is really the most common thing people do with formal Highland yep. in this country, I think. But um or St. Andrews there. So I wouldn't do it for that. Basically. If you're going to the Ren Fair, who cares? You know. Yeah. No holds barred at the Ren Fair. <laughs> Depends on the Ren Fair. Very good. Yep. Was that you? Yeah, it was you. That was mine. Mr. Mack. Well, for, first of all, Ron said that was for a question for a friend. So, sure, Ron, sure, a Ron. friend. Ron, right. I know you're wearing a women's sash, Ron. <laughs> Don't. Why are you scuba diving? The, uh, there was a question about kind of the mix and matching of tartans. Um, this is kind of going back to the Jacobite period. Okay. Um, and we've actually had it pop up a few times on here. Um, about them wearing different tartans. Like mm-hmm. The waistcoat may be this way, or yep. the, the sleeve waistcoat might be this way or that way. Um, so how is that different than what Rocky's saying as far as wearing multiple different... It's all kind of... They're viewing mm-hmm. it kind of the same. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. <clears throat> the Jacobites would wear different tartans top and bottom or different tartans on the outfit and kind of mishmash it all together because that was previous in the evolution of tartans as a symbol of the clan of a symbol of a particular family of how it is perceived now you're taking a current day perception with current day traditions going back 100 150 year or 200 years whatever it is um to something several hundred years ago um it doesn't it there is not a direct parallel it's evolved over time so, yeah, period. Yeah, you can basically blame the stuffy Victorians for codifying everything because that's what they did uh, and limiting our options. Um, yeah, you know, the Highlanders prior to the 17th century or through the 17th century, uh, prior to the prescriptions, let's say, you wore what you had, you enjoyed what you had, and if you had more than one tartan because you had, had access to the fabric, then what the hell? You yeah. know, you just, you just had it and you enjoyed it. Um, they didn't attach the same symbolism to the tartan the way we do now. It was just a piece of clothing. It was yeah. just a piece of cloth. Yeah. It was a practical piece of cloth. It was something that they bought because they liked the pattern or out of the three that that particular mill in that region had woven, yeah. that's and the one that they liked. And then they bought the other one for a for a jacket or whatever. It's what they had. It wasn't right. the, the, the obsession with clothes that we have where we have entire closets full of clothes they had a few things right and they could they could be peacocky too don't 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 think that they weren't like fashion conscious they just uh they had different perception of it and yeah you if you had a kilt that was in a a red tartan because that's what your wife had woven for you a few winters back and then you went to market one summer and and somebody was selling you know a jacket or something and it happened to be in a green tartan you're like that looks like a good jacket how much do you want for it or a brown tweed or yeah yeah um so yeah the perception was different for them. Um, the other thing is to remember, I always like to bring this up, they were not shy about bright colors. We always have this perception that somehow color was invented in the 19th or 20th century and prior to that, everything was brown and drab and gray and washed out, you know. Yeah, how can you tell he's a king? Because he hasn't got all over him. Yep. 
that's not how it was. They, they, they loved their bright colors, so you will definitely see them playing around with that and mixing and matching colors and stuff like that. Clothing was... You didn't have that much clothing, so you had as much fun with it as you could with what you did have. Um, but yeah, it was definitely the... Like we were saying earlier, it is the, it's the advent of the perception of a clan and Tartan as part of your heraldic display, in a sense, very loose sense, um, that made everything codified. And it's, it, again, it evolved over time. I'm going to point out a couple things. One, it didn't have the meaning that we ascribe to it. Like, if you, you know, take everything out of it, it's, you know, this is just a piece of cloth. It is our intentions that put meaning into it, that ascribe it meaning. And I would, I'll also give you another parallel. So that, that didn't happen until 1822 when things started, you know, rolling with, you know, with the king. Um, and then fast forward to tartan designs being registered back in the 1800s versus tartan designs being registered now. Back then, the McDonald tartan did not have the meaning of, well, the green is for the hills of Glencoe right. and the blue is right. for the water and the red is for the blood of those. No, it was, that was just the pattern. It was optically pleasing to the person in power who said, I like that one, that's what we're doing. Now, starting with 1953, 1953, the Nova Scotia tartan, or somewhere around then, that's the earliest example I can find, there's meaning ascribed to the, ascribed, I'm using the right word, right? Yeah, ascribed. ascribed. Yeah, mm -hmm. ascribed to the colors in the tartan was, you know, 1953, Nova Scotia, where they said the green is for the hills and the blue is for the water and whatever else. And now every single tartan that comes through the register Right. They have some right. kind of we meaning. We feel like we have to now. It is expected yeah. now, yeah. where it wasn't back then. Yeah. Now, when something comes through with no meaning, because I, I get the emails from the Tartan Register and I open them up, and when something comes through without a meaning, which is not often, it's kind of like, uh, what's wrong with these people? But it's you catch yourself and you're like, well, it's just a, it's just a design to, you know, this corporate entity that designed a tartan. It doesn't match their corporate logo, whatever. Right. You don't need meaning, but now it's kind of expected. So that's evolved right. over time as well. And it is a <laughs> living, breathing thing. Tartan and Highland wear really started, you know, back in the mists of time. Um, but there are phases that it's kind of gone through and it's still a fashion thing. It mm -hmm. moves like molasses in January, like a behemoth. It does not get steered easily. The traditions, for something to become a tradition in Highland wear, takes much longer for it to become a tradition through wanton usage, but it will evolve over time still. It's not a static thing that has never evolved. It just evolves extremely slowly. Is that a fair point? Yes. Um, Very good. Quick follow-up. How did they tell whose side was somebody on in the battlefield then? Great question, um, Eric. Going back to the, the Highlanders, um, it was basically came down to your <clears throat> cockade or your uh, the uh, herbal uh, plant emblem of your clan, if anything. It's like, everybody put a put a piece of heather in your hat today. Okay. You know, everybody put some myrtle in your hat today. Okay. That's how we'll know who's who. It was basically a very simple, like, shirts versus skins kind of a thing. That was what they used. You know, you did not identify your guys from the other guys by the tartan they were wearing. Not by their blue face paint or not blue face paint. <laughs> or, or as the... Freedom! Having yeah. worn the Braveheart tartan or not. <laughs> was Mel Gibson in front of your group or... Yeah. Yeah. No? No, that's... No. no. Sorry. Some minor inaccuracies. Slight. Do your homework, kids. Very good. Mr. Mack, next question. Alrighty. So... Uh, Gary and Pam on Facebook. Hey, uh, it's <laughs> it's cool. a joint effort on uh, on Facebook for them. Right on. Um, when visiting Scotland and you want to uh, see the process of tartans being made, what do you suggest? Is there anywhere they can go to see something like Is that? Is there? They don't like like to let you in normally, do they? they? Well, no, no, it depends. Okay. Um, the um, uh, Jeffrey uh, Kiltmaker used to have a shop right on the Royal Mile, right at the base of the castle um, in a building he used to own. And in the basement of the building, there was actually a loom set up and they would actually weave their own tartans. Okay. Um, he sold his building 
to a landlord who sold it to the Gold Brothers. Oh. A lot of interesting oh. stories there. Um, and then he eventually got kicked out of his own building or left. <laughs> I don't know, kicked out or left. Um, wow. And I think they still have the, the loom in the basement. There used to be like basically a big opening in the floor where you can look down um, into the stuff and see things being woven. Interesting. Um, I'm not sure if that still exists or not. Um, some mills will do tours if you go to mills. A lot of, uh, especially on the islands. I was about um, to say that one, the, what's the one? Not Nakadu Willow Mill or there's... Yeah, um, the, the new one. We worked with them once. They're you, on the islands. Butte. Yeah, yeah. Well, do they, well, the, they do tours? I think some of the artisanal It's not new. Mills. They've been around for a long time. They actually... Okay. Um, okay. The uh, the uh, forget the dude's name. Um, he's a steward, S T U A R T. He's a uh, a muckety muck on the Isle of Butte, and he bought the mill. Okay. and has like this expansive property and stuff. But he bought the mill to save it and to continue weaving and stuff there. Pretty cool. Okay. Pretty cool story about it. I forget it because it's been ten years since I remembered it. <laughs> um, but um, a lot of the smaller mills or tweed mills, especially huh. on the islands or people that have individual, you know, tweed looms in their houses um, or like the Harris tweed looms and that kind of stuff. They might be able to do something. Um, some of the larger mills, uh, La Caron, House of Edgar, things like that, or, or uh, Martin Mills down in, in England, um, they can do tours. They have done tours. Hmm. I don't know if they do them for the general public or just for like like if we were to go over as buyers and you know because we have accounts with them and we wanted to tour the facility, I think they would let us in absolutely. I'm not sure if how they would feel about the general public wanting to take a tour. Yeah. Um. So I'm not sure. Um, somebody any- somebody on here is saying the Weaving Museum in Paisley, uh, south of Glasgow. Okay. Um, okay. The Weaving Museum in Paisley, great <laughs> place to look up. I hear it's just south of Glasgow, so check that out. Um, yes, yeah, no, it's, it's funny. It's... I, we were filming a video this morning, and I was wearing a Paisley tie, <laughs> and it matched well with this tartan. By the way, I was like, Paisley. See, it's Scottish. Yeah, yeah. there's a very, very Scot. <laughs> Paisley is very, very Scottish. Paisley it's... is Scottish. That's yeah. why it's called Paisley. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But oddly enough, want... from Paisley. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if, but that now, now I'm curious about this museum. I want to check it out. Like, do they do just? Uh, they do all woven know. crafts, or they do tartan, or okay, Paisley's famous the, uh, for Paisley. So. And someone did say that loom is still there as of 2012. Yeah, uh, that's I was there in that was a while 2014, ago, 2014, yeah. I think something around there. So yeah, cool. It's a little while ago, yes. Um, but yeah, it's there. There are mills in Scotland. What I would say is this: if you're really, really interested in it, email the mills or see if there's like. A, 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 a tour guide or a travel tour or something that run tours of Scotland, if they do tours of mills on the islands especially, the mm-hmm. smaller ones would probably be more interested in showing that kind of stuff off because they're they're going to be more artisanal, for lack yeah. of a better term. Yeah. Um, and they're going to have a good gift shop that they're going to want to hawk all their wares. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, the, the Paisley Museum seems like a lock, but, uh, but yeah, I'm not sure. I wonder if they actually do tartan there or if they do things more related to the specific weaving industry of Paisley. If it's a museum but. in Scotland, they probably do all, like they'll probably do some tweeds, if I had to guess, some tweeds, some Paisley, some tartan, just to show off the, you know, the the, the essential Scottish mm-hmm. cloths. And my thanks to whoever uh, commented back to that person with that question. I, I really, I actually appreciate that we're not the only ones answering questions for the show, which is awesome. Yeah. We get, there's like, there's usually a good, conversation going on the groups which is super cool yeah absolutely so Mr. Eric we'll do one, one yep. more you one more Mr. Mac and then go home and take my nap you know that whole trying to not be long winded so we get through more questions thing <laughs> didn't really work out today <clears throat> it's like you've just met us <laughs> um, here's an easier one Colin Patterson asked us oh, which is the most popular tartan you sell uh, I'm guessing that it's Royal Stewart or maybe Black Watch. Is um, there a most popular tartan for us? I'm Scott sure there company? is. Um, I don't know if we'd have record. Our records aren't that great. <laughs> um, it's and it also depends on are you talking wool, are you talking polyviscose, or both. I think um, it just means in general. Yeah. But. Um, 
Ours, Mac, you have more numbers for what casual kilt sales and stuff. I have everything for PV. I could PV is going to be um, American Heritage, American flagship Her- tartan. It's flagship. Um, um, wool, wool and PV together. I'm going to guess Firefighter Memorial um, because of the number of pipe bands that we have yeah, that have firefighters. That's what I was wearing. I think pipe bands kind of skews it. Yeah, you know? absolutely. So um, as an individual a, purchase, kind of most popular. Yes, and you're you were kind of asking or answering a loaded question with us, particularly because there are tartans like there you can only get them here. So it's okay. Okay, fair enough. They're they're you know it it's it's going to artificially inflate the numbers, um, and they're okay. damn good looking designs. <laughs> um, so now, must. Yeah, the uh, oh, well, I didn't do it to firefighters. That was my wife. Um, but yeah, so it's it's one of those where the those for us are more popular. Um, Ireland's National is another hugely popular one. If we're yes. gonna take yeah, that's a that's definitely a front runner. Yeah, if we're gonna take those out of it, I would say probably Black Watch, um, Royal Stewart. A, no, it's everywhere. Say, yeah, yeah, Royal um, it, it's it's everywhere. So so many other companies carry it. Um, and B, generally speaking, guys are more afraid of color, so they're going to, you know, kind of tend towards the darker colors. Um, for instance, like modern color palette tartans tend to sell better than ancient color palette tartans um, or weathered or, or muted, like more toned down drab kind of stuff. Um, so I'm giving you broad brushstroke kind of answers, but probably Black Watch. Mac, any other... If McDonald, we're, if we're taking, would be a, a big one. It, we Campbell. had McDonald was hot there for for a good for a good minute. Yeah. Um it's weird how tartans do that. They come in waves. Yeah, yep. Um, I swear, I swear, there's like a clandestine clan meeting where everyone's like, we all need <laughs> yep. to buy McDonald tartan from USA Kilts. Go, and then all of a sudden, it's like, and and I I, I think it's a weirder thing even than that because what will happen is. We'll get an order or a couple orders for like McDonald Modern in La Karen 16 ounce cloth. And we'll get a few of them and, or just, just one. And we'll call La Karen and they'll be out of stock of the cloth. Then I'll call Strathmore and they'll be out of stock of the cloth. And Martin Mills is out of stock. So I'm like, who the hell's buying up all the McDonald? <laughs> well, I just need a piece of McDonald for this dude. So it's, it's weird how it goes in waves, even with the Mills being mm-hmm. in stock or not. Hmm. It's a random tangent there, back, but yeah. Yeah, I mean the other one I think that we do a decent amount of is Graham. It's just a matter of now really? you break it down into which versions of Graham you got. Like Graham men's teeth or Graham. Okay. Like that one seems to pop up on a consistent basis as well. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I'm trying to think of any other ones. Nothing else really stands out. They all kind of stand out simultaneously. Yeah. Like we do like a good amount of. Uh, uh, Scotland Forever Antique, and like they'll again, they'll come yep. in waves. We'll have like yeah. several of them, but we may just be noticing it because like there's a wedding party, but they haven't told us that they're part of a wedding party. But we'll have like three or four orders for a particular tartan over a month and a half and be like, huh, there's a lot of these. And then we're like, oh, okay, well, they're all in Florida. Maybe that makes sense because they're all part of a thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and even if we want to go the Irish route, you know, you see like County oh, Cork or yeah. you know, like Cork, Donegal, Mayo. Yeah. 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 Those are the big three for Ireland, I'd mm-hmm. say. Yeah. It's a more complicated question than you might have thought. Indeed. There is no clear winner. Yes. They're, <coughs> they're all winners We're all in winners. my book. Everybody's a winner. Yes, indeed. <laughs> all right. Mr. Mack, last question, and then question of the day. And this one's come from Twitch. Ooh, Twitch. Twitch. It's about all right. time. So what can you wear with a great <coughs> kilt to make it more casual? Um, example, would it be okay to wear a normal shirt and some hiking shoes, or is that a not an okay thing to do? You're fine. The, the it's great more kilt, how you wear the kilt. Yeah. <clears throat> in, in my mind, the the great kilt will, no matter what you wear with it, it will always look costumey um, to differing levels. So. If you you know wear a grandfather shirt or Highland shirt or something like that and try to dress up Highlander esque from the 1600s, um, it'll it'll look very costumey because that's what you're going for. Um, you can wear a t-shirt with it and a pair of boots as well. 
but it's still going to look in most people's eyes. Having not seen kilts on a daily basis, most people are still going to go like, <clears throat> huh, that's, you know, a costumey kind of thing versus a tailored garment. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. It's fine. We, we've, been, we've had a run on great kilts in the last four months. Yeah. Unprecedented run on great kilts. Um, weirdly unprecedented run on great you kilts. You know why? Because people are realizing they're awesome for casual wear. Uh, it's, the, yeah. I think there's also a giant influx, and there has been a giant influx in Jacobite uh, reenacting as well. Yes. I think, I think we're definitely seeing a resurgence of uh, an uprising, if you will, <laughs> of uh, Jacobite reenactment. Um, and, and part of it is, even though this, the, the schedule is wonky, I think people really want to get their Ren Faire or Summertime mm -hmm. reenacting event or SCA event or whatever on. So I think that's probably why we're seeing that influx also. Um, but I basically disagree with you on, on that assessment, <laughs> but you already know this. Um, yeah, basically, the, the only rule I will tell you is don't try to wear a jacket with it like a suit jacket. Um, don't try to dress it up. We, we, we occasionally have people asking if they can wear a great kilt with a Prince Charlie or something for a wedding. And I'm just like, no, 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 it's not going to work. It's going to look weird and frumpy and you're crossing the streams between very tailored and very natural. Um, a great kilt worn casually, normally you're not going to have it up over the shoulder. Then it's going to look weird and kind of cost me. But if you wear it basically, you know, rooched and, and floppily around the waist, just as a, you know, a sarong kind of a thing, which is a totally valid way of wearing it, it can look pretty badass. I mean, it is very definitely a tribal look. It's very much a, um, you know, like a modern primitive or pagan or heavy metal or whatever kind of a look. Um, so a t-shirt's fine. A Highland shirt's fine. Um, polo shirt would look dumb, uh, in my personal opinion. But uh, if you're going to wear a great kilt for casual wear, you're doing the rugged you know, outdoors manly man thing with it, you know, so it's a, it's a, in my opinion, it's an awesome look. It's, but it's definitely an intentionally primitive primal kind of a look. So keep it super cash. That'd, I, be, that'd be my advice. I will amend my, my, my comments. And I didn't mean to just come across disparaging if I did. Too late. It's, uh, <laughs> Too late. I hurt him with feelings. I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't write letters. Um, no, it's, Primal primitive is a better way of describing what I was trying to articulate poorly. Mm -hmm. um, when I say costumey, I meant more, you know, primal, and it's it, different. It's 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 different than a tailored mm -hmm. kilt. So yeah, I, I have seen I actually have a one of my favorite pictures is a friend of Lucas's from Celtic Classic last year mm -hmm. that I've actually used on the website of a dude who's in a, a casual great kilt um, down around the waist, um, and he's actually got a dress shirt on. But he's wearing the dress shirt casually. He's got the sleeves rolled up. He's got the collar wide open. Um, is it a dress shirt? It's not a button. Maybe it's a button down. All I know is it's got a collar. Okay. It's, I believe you. I, I'm, I'm remembering the photo. It's not a polo shirt. Um, and it looks cool. It looks good. But uh, it's not It's not something you're going to wear a suit jacket with. You know? <clears throat> Leather jacket. You know? Preferably painted. Or, with some, or a denim vest with some patches on it. I might be biased there, but indeed. Old but that's that's rock, basically yeah. yeah. Rock it, just keep it casual. Yeah, so. yeah. I could see like a, a punk rock look, leather jacket, you know, bunch sure. of you know painting on the back, you know, a la yeah, that early '80s kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice. All right. Question of the day for all yous, all yous out there in the YouTubes and the Facebooks. Hmm. Um, where? Excuse me. When did your family emigrate? And where did they end up? Huh. Keep it with our American theme. Okay. When when did they leave and where did they go? So, and I, you, Mac, you said somebody's from Japan or like some other, you know, far off, far flung place, viewing places viewing across the Japan? galaxy. Yeah, we've had, uh, we've, had quite... we've had quite a few different viewers from all over. We've had uh, some Canadian viewers. So our neighbors from north. Canadian had, land. Nice. We've had Good to uh, see Japan and there's been quite a few other other countries represented sweet today so very nice. cool can't wait for the playoffs to start hockey looking at you canada um <laughs> anyway yes so where or when did your family emigrate and where'd they end up we're curious let us know in the comments yeah until next time boys and girls it's Rhode island 
Rhode Island. Rhode Island. Rhode Island. Rhode Island. Rhode Island. Rhode Island.